Hi everybody and welcome to I Like Cruise Ships, the YouTube channel and welcome to another live stream. This is a little bit scheduled but not quite how I like and I've just realized I've got the wrong screen up straight away. That's a crazy horrible start. So let me just get the right screen up right here and it will make a little bit more sense. There we go. So, um, this is going to be another one of those streams where it's not exactly 100% how I wanted to do it, but uh, we've got it going on. So, uh, the plan is going forward, we're going to have a Sunday live stream or possibly a Saturday live stream like this. Now, it's really just a matter of getting the right timing. So, either early morning or afternoon, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Now, if you're wondering what you're looking at right here, this is actually a live view of Miami Harbor in Florida, or Port Miami, as they like to call it. And this is uh, the ships that are in port today, Saturday, the 22nd of January, 2022. And there's quite a lot of ships in port, as you'll see. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just cut away here to the live uh, tracking of the ships that are in port so we can actually have a look and see here we've got MSC Seashore, uh, Carnival Horizon, Disney Magic, uh, Norwegian Joy and Symphony of the Seas all in port at the same time. You can see this very long line of ships right here. Let's just cut to that wider screen and you can see there there's a, a row of ships and then the Royal Caribbean terminal kind of juts out a little bit. What you're seeing here is Dodge Island, which is where the Port of Miami is uh, in Florida. And basically all the uh, cars come in over here on this far right hand side. Then they loop around and then there's the car drop off. You can see one vehicle just here in the corner. It's a little bit hard to see, but uh, there's one vehicle showing uh, right there. Uh, I see we've got one person in the chat. Uh, again, I don't expect uh, big crowds of people, but if we can get a few people here and there, that would be amazing. Uh, what we might do is we might share it here to a few people in a minute, and we'll go from there. You'll see here the road over to South Beach on this left-hand side, and then these little uh, small uh, kind of bridges here go to uh, Star and Palm Island, which is where all the luxury uh, big expensive houses are where all the you know all the famous sports stars and basketballers and movie stars and TV stars live and you'll see off in the distance here this is South Beach and as the ships sail out they'll pass South Beach on the left hand side or port side of the ship so whoever's uh, watching live how are we going I see one person in the chat thanks for coming by uh, I hope it comes across okay so far what we might do is just jump over to Facebook for a second, see if we can gather up a few more viewers uh, who are uh, around the world uh, and see if we can get anybody else into the chat at the same time. So excuse me for going off the screen right here, but I am here still. Oh, two people. Wow. If anybody wants to post in the comments, it does let me know that you're here. Uh, if you want to put a thumbs up, uh, ideally comments are really good. If you've got any questions about what you're seeing on the screen, um, even if you uh, might want to talk about cruising, we are going to maybe go over a little bit of the cruise news. We might actually look at anybody's uh, YouTube channels if anyone has one. Maybe you've done some cruises before and uh, you might want to talk about your YouTube account, uh, videos. Uh, but again, what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out which is the better day to do the live streaming, either Saturday or Sunday uh, going forward. Uh, it's a little bit hard to kind of judge what everybody wants to do. So uh, I'm here in my kitchen. I am working on getting better audio and video. I'm not sure how it's coming across, but uh, hopefully it's... The um, problem is where I am here in the kitchen, it's a little bit echoey. We've got some carpet in our kitchen. We have a little bit of a bigger kitchen with a kind of a uh, some glass windows right out to my left hand side here looking out over the town. Um, but it's a wood floor and we've got a little bit just behind me. It's a bit hard to see. This side. Ooh, this side. 
There's a sofa and a table we've got right there as well. Uh, where I live here in Moscow, Russia, we have uh, sofas in our kitchens. It's very common that uh, they always like to say the heart of the home is the kitchen, right? And whenever people come over, we all hang out in the kitchen. We all sit on the sofa and we put table food on the table, of course, and we're here. So again, you're looking at a live view right here of Miami Harbor. And you can see quite a few sort of boats off in the distance over here. But particularly, we're looking at all the cruise ships that are in port today. And the one, one that's kind of of interest is the Carnival Horizon. And that'll sail off on the, uh, this afternoon on its first cruise back into service. It, it had the previous, I think, five cruises cancelled. And it uh, actually had to go over to Italy, to Palermo in Italy, for a, uh, a kind of a uh, quick fix, if you like, or a long-term fix to its engine problems that it's been having uh, leading up to its cancellation of voyages. And it has now since returned. So it sailed over there empty of, with no guests. It went into dry dock and then sailed back, which is kind of a crazy thing to do, to go around in circles like that. Uh, let's pull up if we can. Uh, where are we here? Let's just close that, open that. There we go. Saturday live stream. Come and chat about cruising. I kind of like these uh, webcams and live cameras. Um, oops, I can't see that. I've got three screens in front of me and I can't see three screens at the same time so I can't do much around that so we do have one live person I was hoping for a few more but again as it goes you know it's uh, unscheduled so that's the biggest problem uh, so hopefully we'll get a few more in but the uh, real kind of point of the uh, this uh, live stream is to basically um, kind of talk about the cruise ships that are in Miami today. Zoom in a little bit closer. You can see them all in a, in a line here. So MSC Seashore, Carnival Horizon, Disney Magic, Norwegian Joy, and Symphony of the Seas. And that's all of the ships right there in port. What we could probably do, let's see, we'll just post that. Uh, and then we'll uh, see if we can find anybody new. Again, if you're live watching right now, uh, welcome. Uh, if you do want to post anything in the comments, please go ahead. Anything you like, really, we can talk about ships. Uh, we can talk about anything. Um, but, of course, the more the merrier. Uh, at least if you're chatting in the comments, I know that you're here. So that's always a good thing. Um, I'm not so good at scheduling these uh, kind of uh, live um, streams as I'd like to, but uh, talking about the Carnival Horizon live now. Let's paste right there and post that one. Maybe somebody else will come over. Let's see. Maybe it's just me talking to the screen as usual. Um, I did post yesterday, for anybody that might be of interest, I did post yesterday. Uh, I'm looking at the cameras right in front of me. Sorry, I've got a screen above me. And I've got a screen over here to the right. So I did post yesterday a cruise news. So I've done that sort of every second or third day now for, I think is it my fourth one or third one I've done? Um, so yeah, the plan is to do a few more of them just to see how it goes, see if they're uh, successful or not. The, the cruise news kind of updates, it's generally three, maybe four kind of snippets of news from that day, like yesterday or the day before, or the day before and so on. So it's kind of live uh, news, not really live, but it's happened within a day or two of me talking about it. Um, it's not as easy to kind of do live news like the TV stations do, but you can do sort of things on 
on YouTube. So welcome anybody to whoever's joining. Um, again, a little bit unannounced. I did schedule 15 minutes earlier. Didn't really go as I'd liked, but um, Bebel Cruising, how are we going? Let me put your, where is it, that one? Oh, it's this one. Let me put your little comment right there. I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, again, looking at a live uh, view of Miami Harbor. I was going to do the live as the ship sails away later on. I just thought I'd sort of maybe do this one. And I might go live a little bit later when the ship sails. Uh, particularly the Carnival Horizon. That's what we're interested in. Uh, I'm interested in anyway. Um, uh, we can then see it le sailing off. And then hopefully some people might be interested and, you know, um, this camera does jump around. So this can be good where we can actually see people and we can see the ships. Sometimes they will change it. Um, so, yeah. So, again, we're uh, right here in Miami Harbor. Well, I'm not, but I'm in my kitchen in Moscow, Russia. Uh, I do work on cruise ships. If you are watching this for the first time, I have worked on cruise ships now for 21 years. I'm currently on vacation. Uh, uh, I actually came home a little bit uh, quite a while ago now because of the pandemic and I haven't returned to ships just yet. I'm waiting at the moment here in Moscow for a visa. I have my US visa to go on the ships. I have my medical. I have all my documents and everything to go over and join a ship uh, as soon as I can or as soon as I want, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm just waiting for a visa here from the Russian authorities, let's call it who can then arrange for me then to fly out of Russia over to Florida and back. Uh, we have our apartment where I am here in Moscow and I want to be able to fly in and out of Russia straight over to the US and then straight back to Moscow at the end of the contract. Um, I was actually looking last night. Um, they have a lot of uh, like uh, cheap package holidays from Moscow and you can fly to Dominican Republic you can fly to Mexico to Cancun. Uh, you can actually fly to La Romana and go to some of the hotels there. They've got uh, in Moscow. They've got three major airports, and the nearest one to us is about 15 minutes down the road, literally. And they do a lot of uh, charter flights where you get all inclusive. So you get the uh, the flight, the hotel, the transport, uh, meals and food all included. And you go to hotels in La Romana. You can go to Cuba. Uh, Cancun, uh, you can go to in Europe to Egypt, uh, Cyprus, Greece, and I was just thinking it might be actually handy to fly right into La Romana and for the Carnival Horizon especially, uh, maybe rather than flying to Miami, it would actually be easier. Um, so yeah, we've got four people live. How are we going? If you are watching, uh, we are just talking about ships, of course, uh, and if you want to ask any questions, you can go for it. Anything that pops up in the chat. Uh, any ship preference when you return to work? Now, I have been asked and asked and asked about going back to Carnival Horizon. And that's why I'm kind of featuring it here on this. Oh, there's the camera over there. Uh, on this video and on the previous one when we watched it sail in. Um, I'm just waiting for the visa to get back uh, to be able to fly in and out of Russia. Once I've got that visa set up. Uh, which is essentially a residency visa because I'm married here to a, a Russian, of course, my wife being from Russia. Uh, I can then fly in and out of Russia. I don't have to go back to Australia to get a visa to come back to Moscow. And with all these things happening right now, borders are closed, borders are open. And then it just avoids me having to do things like quarantines in different places if I don't have to, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so yeah, that would be my preference would be to get on Carnival Horizon. Uh, I've been asked now as, as, uh, as little as this morning. It's now, uh, where are we? We're at 10 p.m. here in Moscow. So perfect time to go live as well. Um, I was asked to go. As, as literally, I got a message this morning uh, from somebody. Uh, there's a dedicated liquor store on that ship. Uh, the... Carnival Horizon is the first, uh, well actually Carnival Vista, Horizon, uh, now Panorama. They were the first ships to have the multi-level stores where they've got shops on deck 5 and deck 4. So um, 
because of that, it's got its own dedicated liquor store that requires two people to work in it. Um, and um, they want me to be there to run that shop really, really. Oh, they've just, somebody's got onto the camera and zoom back. This is the exact view of Dodge Island right here. Can you see this whole kind of square? So this left hand side, and this is the road that comes in from downtown Miami. And then on the right hand side, this is actually Royal Caribbean's headquarters. It looks very small there. It actually really isn't a very big building at all. Um, and you can see another ship over here. Let's see if we can see what ship that is. Uh, Oce uh, Oceana Marina. I'm not sure if that's sailing anywhere. Is that basically just in port with nobody on board? Um, I think that's the uh, the view that we're looking at right there. Yeah, MacArthur Causeway. That's the name of this road that goes over to South Beach, right here. Um, so yeah, the the idea is to get back on Carnival Horizon and then uh, do a six, seven, eight month contract and then be able to fly back straight from wherever I would assume Miami and straight back over to Moscow where I am here now. Uh, that would be my absolute preference. <laughs> um, otherwise, Carnival Dream, which I believe is out of, is it out of, is it out of Galveston? I think the Vista and Breeze are there as well. Um, one of the problems with the, Duty free shops on board who I work and work on it uh, they have different companies that operate the shops so the concessions on board now are not one company across all carnival ships so there's different companies that operate the shops um, so it's not necessarily one shop uh, company so I can't go on Vista for instance because it's a different company on Mardi Gras it's a different company uh, I'd love to go on Mardi Gras for the fact that it's the biggest carnival ship and the newest carnival ship, but uh, with the way it is right now, it's just not as possible. What we might do is we might uh, just switch screens for a second. So we'll jump over to me, shall we? Sorry for the big view of me. And let's just do share screen. Oops, there we go, and we want to do, where are we, right here, we need to open, I've got three screens open, so this is a little bit more than I need, but we can figure it out, I hope, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some photos of the, where are we, let's go to phone, Somebody asked about uh, some uh, photos of the Carnival Horizon. I'm not sure how many we can show here, but let's just see how many we can pull up. Let's go to that one and see if this works, shall we? Wow, this is too many things going on. Sorry, everybody. Always when you watch someone else's, uh, you know, kind of, uh, where is that picture? It's right there. I want that one. Let's drag it over here. Let's drag it over there. We really want that picture to share. There we go. Check that out. Actually, this is a folder from Carnival Horizon, but it would have been when other ships were in dock at the same time. So we may not see all the same photos. So that first one's actually Cozumel. So the Triumph now is obviously no longer. I was on the Triumph when the uh, poop cruise happened. How long ago was that now? That's uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, that's actually... Uh, Ocho Rios, Jamaica. Actually, it's very rare you see a second ship in Ocho Rios, and this is the, uh, do they call this the Sugar Dock or the Rum Dock? I think there's a certain name for it. This is actually Margaritaville right here, and then the actual cruise terminal where the ship's really dock is over here on the right. Um, so it's quite rare that you'll see, yeah, this is the actual port here in Ocho Rios, 
where you see the uh, ships typically dock and it'd be rare 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 you'd see a second ship docked in uh, in Ocho Rios. This is actually the uh, closest restaurant to the ship. So we zoom in here you'll probably see some crew members uh, on their laptops. A lot of crew get off and use the, the internet and you can just walk in here buy a coca-cola or a beer or a drink and that's Carnival Horizon right there in the port. Um, so we've got five people live. How are we going? We are just looking over some photos of Carnival Horizon right now. We were previously looking at the live shot of Miami Harbor. We'll go back to that in a little bit. Uh, Renee asks, what do you think Carnival Cruise Line will be full ship during summertime? So you're probably asking, do you think that there'll be full uh, capacity, I guess, guests um, on board? So that right now they're sailing at a reduced capacity. Um, yeah, I, for now, and I'm going to say probably for the next six months to a year, uh, I think the ships will stay at a reduced capacity. It's just easier, I think, for the cruise lines to manage less people. Um, I'm sure sort of from a monetary point of view, they'd want full ships. Um, you know, personally, of course, uh, working in the shops and we're there to make money and rate and sell things. Uh, a lot of our sales targets are based also around the passenger counts. So if the passenger counts are lower, our targets are lower and our expected sales aren't, as, aren't necessarily need to be as high because it's based on the amount of people. So uh, anybody on board literally from baby through to full adult is considered a passenger or a PAX, P-A-X. And the amount uh, that are on board uh, will dictate what the sales targets would be for the shops. So this is actually the I-95 on the ship or the, uh, the main corridor that runs through the entire middle of the ship on deck zero. That blue area there is actually the forward gangway where you get on and off in the ports. And then uh, you'll see here, it's a bit, oh, we can probably zoom in a little bit. So typically if the ship's in port, they close the fire screen doors here, and then they put up a stanchion, and they tell all the crew they've got to walk around and go down these steps, walk through deck uh, deck A, and then on the other side of the uh, gangways, there's another staircase going up, uh, so that you don't interfere with guests coming in uh, in the ports of call. So when the ship's docked, uh, they close off, and then the actual uh, reason being is that a lot of crew need to pass forward and aft through the ship. So, uh, what we could quickly do here, I don't know if we can do it as easily as I'd like, is if we go to, let's see if we can just pull up a little uh, thing here about, um, where is it now? It's over here. Let's pull up this, shall we? Now, it might not be as easy to see as you'd like, but this is actually the passenger count for the Carnival Horizon sailing today. So the ship's kind of regular capacity, I guess you would call it, would be between about 4,100 and 4,500. Um, the double occupancy of the ship uh, may be a little bit of a lower number. So typically the occupancy is based on how many uh, cabins the ship has and how many beds the ship has, and then uh, how many people can go in each room. So you can have a room with, you can have a five berth suite with one person in it, but then you obviously could have five people in it. Then you could have a cabin that's, uh, say for instance, like a, a fairly typical balcony room that may have uh, a two single beds or one queen bed or double bed. And then it may have the sofa that's convertible and it may have the Pullman bed that can come down as well. So you could actually then fit three or four people in the cabin. So, ah, good afternoon. Oh, there we go. We've got Brenda right here as well. So Brenda, Renee, uh, Bebel Cruising. I'm going to keep calling you Bebel Cruising. Um, afternoon. Glad to catch you live. Thanks. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, again, unscheduled. Uh, we're just talking, if you've just come in or not, we're just talking about the passenger count. That's currently, can I zoom in a little bit? Oh, I can't, no, I can't. No, we'll stay like that. So yeah, so uh, this is the itinerary here. Sea Day, Sea Day, Aruba, Bonaire, La Romana, Amber Cove, 
sea day then back to Miami so fun day at sea working on the ship you call it a sea day not a, a day at sea so fun day at sea a sea day so yeah there's gonna be 2384 passengers so that's pretty close to half the capacity half the capacity um, which is you know kind of very low in terms of the ship that can hold 4,000 plus passengers to have um, 2383 uh, guests under 18, 139. Uh, they tend to have different, what they call kid counts. On the ships, they call them kid counts. So they may have the under two count, uh, which is obviously babies and infants. They may have an under 16 count, and then under 18. Uh, they don't. I don't know why they don't do an under 21, but they just have under 18. I guess that kind of counts for most of the kids' club activities and that age span. Um, so, and here they've even broken it down to card holders. So, this is kind of interesting. 567 um, blue cards. So that would be someone that's a first-time cruiser. So, if they've never been on a carnival ship at all, um, then they're going to get a blue card. 567. So, it's, what's that? Just under a quarter. Red card is if you've done uh, at least one cruise. So, two or more cruises. Uh, 501. Now, I don't know the exact number of the next two, so gold would be, let's say, let's call it roughly seven or eight cruises or more, and then, so that's 818, kind of that's about the middle amount of people. Platinum used to be 10 or more cruises, um, so that would be, uh, it, it now is how many cruise days that you go on, not how many cruises, so uh, something like 50 or 90 or 100 days. Um, and then diamond would be a good way to reference about 25 or more cruises. So that's only 67 people. And that doesn't matter if they're couple, single, I don't know, however they want to call it. Uh, 67 total people are um, diamond. So it's not too many, but that's about normal for diamond. It can be even less than that sometimes. Even with a 4,000 passenger count, you could get 50 to 100 diamond guests. Um, so yeah, also it's got the breakdown of countries here, USA 2131, which is pretty much the absolute majority of everybody on board, 82 Canadians, 12 UK, or British, and Cleveland, Ohio. So this has actually come from John Heald, and John Heald always has that kind of joke about the uh, people from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I didn't break the number down exactly. Captain Claudio Capisti, and Cruise Director Erin Nicole, I've Probably maybe worked with her when she was before being a cruise director. But I don't know her as a cruise director working on the ship physically. Uh, the um, non-US count is going to be very low because of the border situation. Also, people aren't particularly wanting to do go through all of the uh, testing and regimes of quarantining if it's necessary to come in and out of the country. So that's probably why. And then typically, uh, even sometimes you may have US, you may have Canadians who live in America and are cruising with a Canadian passport, but they live in the US. And likewise with this 12 UK, I mean, that would be maybe as little as six couples. They may live in Florida, but they have a US, uh, a British passport, maybe with a uh, US visa. So, yeah, so that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Under 21, under 18, so 139 kids is not a lot of kids. If that was broken down by ages uh, or age demographics even further it would be very very few um, so yeah that's kind of very interesting that's an interesting a friend there's posted a photo of uh, Miami from an hour ago I wonder what ship she was on that's a kind of pretty cool view there that's sailing out of Miami Harbor right there it's where we're looking at that previous view we were looking the other way and that's the uh, MacArthur Causeway going over to South Beach. They were probably at the back of the ship. And then we'll see that's a bit further. That's the rest of Miami downtown. Am I on the right? Yeah, I've got the right mouse. And there's the crowds at South Beach. Check that out. All the crowds at South Beach. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? It's always good to have friends who have some nice, uh, nice photos that they took when their ship sailed out. Uh, we've got a few more questions here, so let's go through them, shall we? Um, what have we got? Let's go first to Renee. 
Denigris. De, uh, uh, have you worked on Carnal Magic? If so, can you please tell me about her? We're going in late summer. So yeah, I've been on Magic oh, a few years ago now. Uh, Magic and Dream are pretty much uh, sister ships. Uh, it is considered one of the bigger ships. You know, it's very hard where people kind of say, oh, that's a bigger ship. This is not as big a ship. Really, Carnival, really, for me, okay, of course, Mardi Gras is a bit of a one-off. But pretty much all the bigger ships would be Magic, Dream, um, of course, Horizon, Vista, Panorama, um, which would be all considered big ships. Um, yeah, plenty to do on board. I mean, Magic, Dream are, are, are big ships. There's a lot to do on board. Uh, you've got the water slides. You've got the movies under the stars, you know, the big the, uh, screen by the pool. Uh, I guess the one thing with, let's say, Dream and Magic, it doesn't have, like, the IMAX theater, which Horizon has. Um, on Panorama, it's the trampoline park, which I haven't seen that how it is. But, um, I mean... For me, uh, Dream, I mean, if I compare it to Dream and Magic, I like both ships. I like the itineraries the ships did. Um, I mean, you know, working in the shops on those two ships, Dream and Magic, um, I, basically the liquor store is built into the t-shirt or logo store, so it's kind of a big walkthrough store together. Going over to Horizon, I like the fact that they split the shops up and put the liquor store completely separate, so I had my own store to work in. It was just me. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I liked working on Magic and Dream uh, when I was on there. Um, you know, I mean, does it have IMAX theater? I mean, is, is that a big deal? Is it a deal breaker that you did, don't have it? I mean, I don't think so. Um, you know, it, is the water slides a little bit shorter and not as amazing? I mean, I don't think so. Um, I mean, ideally, I think a few factors deciding on your cruise is which port of call you're sailing out of and the convenience of getting to the ship from where you live. So do you have to fly or do you have to uh, uh, drive, you know? And then the ports of call, maybe you've been to them before and you want to, you know, go back to a place that you've seen already. Um, I mean, it's very hard to say, you know, oh, the food wasn't good on the Magic, it was better on the Dream, it wasn't as good on Horizon, it was better on Mardi Gras. I mean, pretty much the fleet has a very similar menu set up, ship to ship. Um, of course, you're going to have different cooks and chefs, but they're interpreting the same menus. Uh, they're trying their absolute best to offer the same product across all the ships. Um, I guess the new thing, which is not on all the ships, is the Shaq's uh, chicken, big chicken, Shaq's big chicken, which I haven't seen yet at all. On you know, I got off the dream, uh, my end of the contract after uh, 2020, and it feels so long ago coming around to two years so um, yeah I think you'll have a great time I mean no question um, Michael uh, how are we going we've got a carnival breeze cruise leaving June 25th my wife myself and our 10 year old daughter it'll be all of our first time oh cool so yeah breeze actually breeze today let's just go over oh there's a ship coming into port here is that the sensation Let's just go to... Oh, it's the Ecstasy is coming in. Have a look at... Let's just quickly go to this for a minute. So the Ecstasy doesn't have any uh, guests on board. It's just crew. And have a look at its uh, route or route uh, before it came in. It's coming into port now. It's just going around in circles and dot to dot and scribble to scribble. So if you find that kind of interesting... So yeah, I guess if we go back to that view, they'll probably zoom in at some point. Um, so this has got basic crew only on it. They are kind of using this ship as a bit of a quarantine ship at the moment as well. So where crew have any ailments or positive cases, they're being brought over to this ship, which is not back in service. Um, and then they're basically spending their time on board this ship, which is you know 10 or 14 or how many days they need to. Uh, spend before they can then go back to another ship and what it's been doing is rendezvousing out in the off the Bahamas with other ships so it's been coming into port and dropping crew on and off um, and uh, getting on and off other ships and they're utilizing it between cruise lines as well so crew from Holland America uh, Costa's not really in that area but Holland is um, so yeah kind of interesting 
Yeah, so yeah, Breeze actually is. I was just going to go over to that map. Breeze is uh, in port today in... Where is... Oh, I'm miles away to Texas. The Breeze is in... In Galveston today. That's the two piers in Galveston. And the Breeze and the Vista are there together. Um, I was meant to go on Breeze when they were building the ship... And I ended up going on as the next team on the, on the next contract afterwards. Um, so yeah, it's a very, very nice ship. Breeze, obviously, also, interestingly, when they built that ship, and uh, it was kind of the first ship that they didn't use Joe Farkas as the principal architect of the interior of the ship. Carnival for, I'd say, more than 20 years or longer used one... Uh, interior designer uh, Joe Farkas is his name and if you've been on any of the older ships particularly fantasy class ships even some of the conquest class ships you'd see that kind of very Vegas like you know neon and lights and mirrors used everywhere and then the breeze uh, is the first ship where they basically let's say fired him not to be how they did it but and they scrapped uh, the whole idea of having that interior design and then they started off on scratch uh, to get a new complete look of the ships so uh, just quickly there Bebel Cruising is asking what uh, program I'm using or what website I'm using to follow the ships and do they have a mobile app I'm not sure if they have a mobile app I don't have this app on my phone it's called uh, cruisemapper.com so I guess if you go to your um, Google or your um, what do you call that the website browser um, and put in cruisemapper.com they probably have an app and I just don't know I'm almost certain if I go up on that top oh, they do have look can you see here on the very top it says their mobile apps for Apple and Android so you could pull up a really nice easy map uh, just while we're talking about the uh, quarantine ships Sensation is the other one that they've uh, been using uh, for ships off Galveston. So if there's any crew that have tested positive, they've took them over to Sensation, and then they've brought them back onto the ship when their quarantine period's over. Um, so, yeah, the it's going back to the breeze there. Uh, where are we? Ooh, let's go back up a little bit. Uh, Michael's question there. Sorry, everybody. We're jumping around a little bit. If you want to share this to any of your favorite social media outlets or whatever you might do, share it to your homepage. Or to, if you're in a cruise group, maybe we can get some more people in here. I'm kind of happy however many are in here if it's just me talking to the screen. Um, yeah, Breeze was the first ship where they basically went with a very more contemporary look and more uh, simpler colors and woods. Um, in terms of what the ship uh, looked like inside. Does that make sense? Um, and, you know, I thought it was very nice. And then, actually, when they've brought out now the uh, Carnival Radiance, I think is the one that was the Triumph, uh, was the one that was the Triumph. Can we get that one over here? Yeah, we can. Um... I don't know if we've got any inside shots, have we? This is actually the crew bar on board. Um, can you see these kind of more simpler looking woods? Have we got any public areas? This is the crew bar on the ship. Um, but uh, the interior of the ship is more, you know, cleaner looking and more easier on the eyes on the breeze. I think that's the... Um, and then actually when the, yeah, the Radiance came out and then the Sunshine and... Um, Sunrise, Sunshine Sunrise, Radiance, they were calling it Baby Breeze because they, a lot of the look of the ship when they remodeled them looked very much to how the breeze was brought out and that coloring and that wood and that look of the corridors and the carpets and things like that. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting um, that they were calling it Baby Breeze. Um, uh, Brenda says going on Carnival Horizon June 25th, first time cruising since cruising opened up. Has this eight day cruise 
you've had a cruise planned for eight years and you're still going on the same one. You've not had to change it like seven times. That's kind of crazy. Uh, have we got the right? Yeah, we got the right one. Screen there. This is actually Cozumel. Uh, that's the second pier in Cozumel. This is Grand Princess here. So I'll give you a little bit of like this uh, ship here. It, they call this sometimes the uh, Carnival Shopping Trolley or shopping cart or buggy, depending on where you live, because of this handle at the back. This is actually the disco here on the very back of the ship. Um, they've actually now in these builds, they've gone into dry dock sins and they've cut this whole back of the ship off and completely got rid of it because it was very, making the ship very back heavy and they didn't sort of get any gain in satisfaction from guests. But that's the nightclub up there and it's called Skywalkers. And you can't quite see, but there's a there's a travelator that leads you up there to this sort of bar and lounge on the very top of the ship. That's the travelator there. Look at the color of the water. There's my favorite guy burger. Yeah, you can see this is the uh, the Skywalk or Skywalkers that go at the top. But that's all been cut off now. They took them into dry dock, and they were gone. So yeah, three years planning the cruise. That's crazy. Um, Getting a little bit sidetracked. Let's go back to this view so we can see it a little bit. Yes, yeah, so the eight day cruising I think is doing this Aruba Bonaire uh, or Aruba Curacao. I think they're switching out some of the itineraries. Um, so that's kind of cool. Three years um, in the making. That's very cool. I'm sure you're like counting the days and minutes now. Um, so Bebel says, I think they are in between holidays in the U.S. We just had Martin Luther King weekend and the next holiday in pre is President's Day weekend in February. So maybe that's why there's not a lot of kids on board. Right. Yeah. So that's a big factor um, with the um, cruises, you know, in school holiday times and non-school holiday times. The kid, we call them kid counts. The passenger kid counts drop very, very quickly. And then, you know, on a ship with 4,000 guests when they're at capacity and it's school holidays, you can get more than 1,000 people under 18 on board. Uh, and if they count under 21, it can be 11, 12, 1,300 um, kids on board, which is a lot. But you've got to remember, Carnival is a family cruise line, so let's sort of always keep that in mind. I mean, having that many kids is not, you know, out of the realm of, you know, let's say adults with kids cruising together, so... The camera zoomed in a little bit now to the uh, the ships pulling into port. Um, some luxury yachts over here. Look at the size of the mast on this luxury boat right here. Look at the traffic going over to South Beach from d downtown Miami. There's really only a couple of ways over there. And this is the main highway that brings you sort of from, let's call it, Florida into, into South Beach. So... Yeah, the passenger cap. Also, I think there's a little bit of a factor too about the, the kids, uh, where they may be unvaccinated. Uh, there may be a lot of families hesitant to take their kids on the cruises because they can't do some of the activities on board unvaccinated. And then also getting off in the ports. If the adults are vaccinated but the kids aren't, then you can't get off the ship unless you're on a bubble excursion. And I really think that's a, another reason maybe why there's going to be lower kid counts even outside of school holidays. But I think, Bebel, you're right there about that sort of question. Uh, all right, day on horizon is Aruba, Bonaire, La Romana, Amber Cove. I've been to Amber Cove, but other three are new. Yeah, so Amber Cove is really cool. The, uh, the My worst <laughs> nightmare, if you want to call it, uh, especially for this YouTube channel, is I didn't finish making a video of a walk around of Amber Cove. Um, the couple of cruises leading up to the shutdown, my absolute plan was to get off and do a full terminal walk around. If you maybe watched the one from Cozumel or Progresso, uh, I've done all the Cozumel piers, even the Royal Pier, the downtown one. And I was planning, planning to make one of Amber Cove and I never finished it or I never started it really. I filmed a couple of shots uh, but the way I like to film them and do narration, I've done the ones in Jamaica as well. Um, you know, they take a little bit longer to do and I never did it. So, yeah. Uh, Aruba is beautiful. You go to the beaches. Bonaire, I, I've been there, but I've 
very rarely either got off the ship that day or I get off and just go to KFC and back. Um, so definitely for Bonaire, I would definitely look at excursions if you can go snorkeling or on a, uh, um, not to be distracted, there's a helicopter just going by right here. Not a UFO, as we pointed out in the live stream a few days ago. Yeah, definitely for Bonaire, look into doing maybe some sort of a, maybe a catamaran excursion or a sail and snorkel kind of tour. Um, Aruba, a lot of people do go to beaches as well. There is shopping right there in town where the ships dock. Uh, Laramana is a port with a, a cruise terminal, which is not the cruise line's cruise terminal, but there's a shopping area. I've done a, a full walking tour of Laramana's one on the, on the YouTube channel as well. If you want to check that out, um, a lot of people do, um, you can go on a tour to Santa Domingo. Where outside of the cruise terminal in La Romana, there's nothing there. Um, there is a downtown area, which is about 15 minutes away. Um, it isn't the most amazing of places. Uh, the locals, particularly when they see the tour buses, can get a little bit, I'm going to say not aggressive, but emotional about wanting to have you spend money and buy their souvenirs from them. A lot of people do La Romana as their day on the ship and maybe pick one of the ports to not get off that day. And La Romana is typically one. Um, you can get off and walk around the terminal, go get some little souvenirs and jump back on the ship and have a day on board that day. Um, so we've got uh, Scott here saying, what is the rule for kids under 12 for COVID vaccines? Now, I believe I now, gosh. This is going to test me here. This is the one thing I was trying to avoid on the channel is uh, doing any kind of videos uh, about uh, explaining about either vaccines or the rules about testing um, because they're changing. And literally even as much as yesterday, uh, they changed. This is Carnival's website, by the way. And then this is their sailing safe sailing protocol. Now, every cruise line is going to have a slightly different rule. So don't take this as any kind of truth. This is the Carnival website that I'm looking at right here. And they updated it literally yesterday uh, with some rules about having, for Carnival, uh, all guests. Uh, this is actually, I think, coming into effect... I don't think it's immediately, is it? I think it might come into effect in a cer at a certain date where all guests must be vaccinated. Um, I'm not sure if there's an age requirement. I would definitely look this up. Um, yeah, guests, so for being, for testing to, to go on the ship for kids, yeah, guests age two and older must present a negative PCR test taken within 72 to 24 hours prior to sailing. Um, so that's kind of important. So guests who are older must have a negative test aboard the ship. Um, yeah, there is the opportunity where you can be unvaccinated, but you've got to have, uh, it's really broken down here, Florida, Texas, South Carolina guests, guests from California, Youth programs, uh, so kids, kids, Camp Ocean uh, programs are, uh, is open on a modified basis to fully vaccinated children ages five to eleven. Um, Circle C and Club are two unvaccinated youth and teens will not be permitted to participate. Uh, so Circle C is the one that's the age. Is it around about eleven? I'm not. I can't remember this specifics. Doesn't mention about 12 or older or what their breakdown is. So I definitely look it up on their website of the cruise line you're going to go on, Scott. I don't want to give any wrong information, honestly and truly. Doesn't say here the age. Just, oh, there we go. So these are some of the ones for the ports. Um, so St. Kitts, Bonnet, Tortola, guests age 12 and, and older will have to remain on board. Grand Turk, guests age 16 and older will have to remain on board. So Limon, guests, these are for unvaccinated guests. There you go. So this is anybody that's unvaccinated. Uh, if you go into the private islands, unvaccinated guests of all ages can get off only on the private islands. I know that for sure. 
Uh, yeah, unvaccinated guests cannot go ashore in the ports of call on their own. Guests may only disembark in the ports of call if booked on a carnival-sponsored bubble tour. So you've got to basically follow that rule. You've got to have masking and things like that. Um, yeah, so vaccine exemptions are not guaranteed in a, a capacity control based on the total number of vaccinated guests projected to be on board. The number of exemptions... There we go. Vaccine exemptions for ships departing California and Alaska will be accepted for children under 12 uh, and as required by U.S. federal law. So there's a different rule. Um, yeah, while the, the decision to vaccinate children is obviously a personal one, if you are a family with children aged 5 to 11 and want to guarantee your ability to sail together, we encourage you to consider your vaccination options. Unvaccinated guests granted an exemption must abide by uh, certain requirements and protocols, which include the testing, travel insurance, and so on. So, Scott, it's a long answer, so <laughs> we might want to have a look at that. Oh, we've got more people in the chat. I'm going to jump through all these questions here. Sorry if I didn't answer your question, but I thought we'd do our best. Let's go back to that live shot, shall we? Um, what website uh, are you using to follow the ships? Yes, so Cruise Mapper. Um, Alexis, how are we going? Dubuk. Uh, is the Mariner Seas Royal Caribbean a good ship? I haven't worked on Royal Caribbean, so uh, I can't answer like personal questions about Royal. I know it's one of their bigger ships. Um, I know one thing that uh, you know. There's always that comparison. Royal is better than Carnival. Carnival is better than Royal. Um, you know, they have that, they call it the Royal Way. They have a little bit of a slightly different way, if you want to call it, that Carnival has famously operated, you know, for 50 years coming up. Um, Royal Caribbean has a little bit more emphasis on onboard activities and the amount of things that they can offer, you know, with ice skating and flow riders and uh, on the some of the newer ships, the uh, iFly. And... They put a lot of emphasis on the ships being the destination, not really the fact that you're going somewhere to get off in another port of call. Have a look on this quickly here, how small the fantasy looks next to Symphony. Um, so that's three times the size. I think it's 200 plus thousand tons. This is 70,000 tons. Um, yeah, so I think... Uh, you know, a lot of people like to go on Royal for the features of the ship. Um, if you were to compare two ships out of the same home port, I guess then you would have to make that sort of decision, you know, by going on both to kind of know, I, oh, I like Royal better, I like Carnival better. You know, um, you know, this whole fun ships kind of mentality that Carnival's picked up over the years, that's something that's really down to you and how much you get involved in activities and stuff. Uh, Brenda says our December cruise is on the Mardi Gras can't wait to explore the ship yeah I think the biggest thing that the feedback so far is it's don't you know walk on the Mardi Gras I mean of course it's a carnival ship but it's not like any that's ever been built in terms of that traditional you know deck 5 uh, promenade deck uh, deck 10 Lido deck you know They've completely mixed up, if you want to call it that, the uh, layout of the ship and then the zones of the ship. So where you're used to your you know, guest service is traditionally on deck three in the lobby. It's on deck nine and you know, the spa's on deck three and then the food's on deck 15. And it's, you know, you're going to, let's quickly say you're going to love it or hate it. And I guess that's down to a personal thing as well. But a lot of good feedback. Um, a lot of people have sort of mentioned that the uh, family, uh, so what's it called, the um, Havana area is a little bit smaller, and some people have also mentioned smaller bathrooms, so I guess that's, you know, down to a personal thing. Uh, Bebel says to Brenda, they're so, so jealous, hope you have a great time on Mardi Gras, I say, Shaq's Big Chicken is awesome, I uh, hope you can check it out, I hope they make it fleet-wide. Yeah, I think that's... You know, I guess they'd, they'd have to kind of take the ships into sort of a dry dock and, you know, uh, to be able to convert uh, an area of the Lido deck to, to the Shack's chicken. You know, whether they sacrifice uh, one area of the uh, Lido buffet area to bring that into place. 
Um, I guess they the newer current last couple of ships they did it. They were able to do it for Radiance, of course, and then the Mardi Gras. Yeah, I want to try Jack's Jack's chicken. Sh Jack's chicken. Uh, I like my guy burgers personally. So, um, Purvis, how are we going? I know you're a long time watcher of the channel as well. Uh, I've really enjoyed your port walk around, so I hope you can get Amber Cove in before November 2023. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I, I hope to be on a ship as soon as next month, uh, for sure, in the next two years. Uh, and that's my absolute goal, is to do the walk around in the ports. And I so wish I could have got that Amber Cove one done. Uh, we did also go to Costa Meyer. And what I did on the first time we got off, I did a kind of a reconnaissance. So I did a walk around myself. I'd been there before. And I kind of looked and I thought, oh, it's just too many little nooks and crannies at Costa Maya uh, that I didn't end up filming it that day. And I went to the beach and we went to actually a hotel and went to their pool in the hotel. And I never finished the video either. <laughs> um, uh, what are the differences of the Mariner Seas between Johnny Rockets and... Oh, I don't know about Johnny Rockets Express. I know about Johnny Rockets... Uh, one thing that uh, there is a bit of always feedback about Johnny Rockets is it's it's a menued uh, restaurant. Not everything is free at Johnny Rockets. I'm not sure about Johnny Rockets Express. Um, maybe we can look that up. I wonder if there's anything on Google about Johnny Rockets. Rockets Express. Royal... Um, quick cruise food. What? Well, I wonder if they kind of doing like a um, guy burger style thing. Um, burgers, fries, and sunny skies. Oh, let's. Oh, we, yeah, we can see that, can't we? Oh, they're trying to sell us a cruise. All of your favorites. Casual attire. Johnny Rockets Express, burgers, fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and even spiked shakes for those who want. And it does have a little price tag there. So, oh, see the menu. See the difference? Let's see the menu. Come on. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, all burgers are served on a brioche bun. So there's all the burgers here. So make it a combo. So, yeah, one thing that was ever spoken about when Carnival come up with um, Guy Fiori's burgers or Guy Burgers and then Royal Caribbean having Johnny Rockets was the fact that Johnny Rockets isn't free. Um, I'm not sure about the difference between the Express and the Not Express. Maybe they've got a little different area that serves and it's maybe more of a takeaway style versus a sit-down menu. But they've got their $7.99 at a side for $1.99. The burgers look pretty good, though. And I'm a burger person, so... Our famous handspun shakes for five fifty. I mean, okay, charging for drinks is not a problem. I mean, I don't see any problem with that. Um, I guess, I mean, is it a better burger because they're charging you versus it being free? I mean, I don't think so, but... Um, I just imagine that this Express one may be just a little bit of a quicker type of uh, thing on board. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you can eat it at all times. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's maybe a, just a shorter menu. Oh, hello from Romania. I wonder if you're still in the chat. Uh, Romano, Romeo Istador. Um, so there we go. We're a little bit behind on the chat, but we're kind of going through everything as we do it. Don't hold me uh, to this, but I think the difference is that Johnny Rockets is more of a sit-down order anything on the menu, whereas the Express is in the pool area and is more grab-and-go. Absolutely. I think that's completely the answer, and it sounds like it is too. Um, I've uh, seen pictures of Johnny Rockets where, you know, and it really is like the diner that you go to. I've been to the one in, I've been to one in Bali, Johnny Rockets in Bali. And I've been to one in Orlando, and it, it was very, very good. Uh, and they put the music on and everything like that. And it's a whole, you know, experience to go to Johnny Rockets. Um, Alexis is asking, is there entertainment on Mariner good? I know in terms of, uh, you know, uh, I do follow one guy on Twitter who's the guy that's the head of entertainment. And the shows look amazing. I mean, truly, truly do look amazing. Um, I mean, if I compare 
you know, Carnival's newest ships. I mean, they've got great entertainment. I think sometimes people always say Royals Entertainment's on a little bit of another level. Uh, I'm not sure if Mariner has the ice skating rink. If it does, you'd have the ice shows. Um, oh, there we go. So Bebel says, yeah, if, uh, definitely if you're sailing Royal Caribbean Oasis class ships are the destination. I sailed on Harmony of the Seas and wow. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, the, the bigger, bigger ships, if you want to call it that, like Symphony over here. Um, where's my mouse? There it is. Um, you can see the actual back deck here is the Aqua Theatre, which is just insane. They've got these these little things that are jutting out over here, are high dive platforms, where people kind of high dive literally into this pool. You have to look at a YouTube video of it because you'll be blown away. Um, oh, I think Bebel's answering my own questions. Uh, check out on YouTube the Royal Caribbean blog by Matt. You will find out. A lot of information about Mariner of the Seas. Oh, maybe we should just pull that up for a quick second, shall we? Let's close that, close that. Let's go to another YouTube. Let's, what is it? Cruise by Matt? Or Blog by Matt? Cruise by Matt. Let's have a look at that, see if there's a Cruise by Matt. Right. Swingers Cruise. Oh, let's not look at that. Royal Caribbean Cruise by Matt. There's Royal Caribbean blog. Hmm. Where is what's it say there? Royal Caribbean blog by Matt. Guess we're not gonna find him, are we? Blog de Matt. That looks like the Spanish guy. <laughs> See if there's any channels here. We're going to give up after this. Royal Caribbean. Yeah, there's Royal Caribbean blog, which is definitely worth following. I don't know if that might be the one you're referencing. But this has got a whole channel dedicated, 121,000 people, um, dedicated to Royal cruises. So I reckon if we put in Mariner here. Mariner of the Seas. Yeah, look, he's got full ship tour, test cruises, Q and A on board. So this guy has got it going, and it makes me look like I don't have it going. Um, so you might want to check that out. Let's close that quickly because it's an amazing channel. <laughs> oh, look at the ship pulling in right here now. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, the Mariner has what kind of amenities? It's got a lot of stuff. Let's have a look. Um, amenities. Let's, let's see what Google tells us. Shall we? Oh, Voyager class ship. So it's probably got the ice skating rink. That's me not even knowing. Is there any photos of it? Let's have a look at some photos. The pool right there. The pool looks pretty good. There's their water slide, basketball. It's got the uh, the flow rider, which is the uh, that kind of wave. They've got one in Grand Turk as well. Brito's pool bar. Yeah, there's the water slide at the back there. I think we're just going to see that's the uh, the atrium there. Oh, I forgot the name. They've got a certain name, haven't they? Um, you know, the basketball, there's the shops, that's kind of cool. These are all just photos from Google, so we're just sort of cheating to look at it and stuff. That's their uh, activity area at the back of the ship there with the, the slides. Um, just kind of neat. And you can see how they changed it over the years from that original design. Um, I think it hasn't got an ice skating rink, does it? Yeah, it does. Mariner of the Seas. It has an ice skating rink on board. What more do you need on a cruise? 
So you got everybody ice skating there on a cruise ship. Ice skating on a cruise ship. And I live in Russia and I haven't been ice skating. And I can go to the local park and do it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so Alex says that they're going, Alexis said they're going in July. Oh, and Mikhail Kilo Vogo Nogo. I don't know what that means. I think that's a weird website. Oh, Royal Caribbean blog. Yeah, so we actually pulled up the right one. So that was kind of handy, wasn't it? We pulled up the right uh, link. Look how they parallel park the ship here. I wonder if we can get that other camera up. Uh, that's the camera we were looking at, isn't it, I think? Is that the one we were looking at? Oh, I've got some ads coming. Yeah, that's the same one. Let's go to Port Miami Webcam. Where is the other one? This one. Let's see what these guys are doing. Oh, they're just scrolling, so we're not going to see as much, because that goes back and forth a little bit. It jumps around. Jumps around. Get up, get up, and get down. Can I be a mod? Uh, there's not really that many people in here to mod mod moderate. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't think we really need one unless we, especially if we're going to go regularly doing this on Saturdays or Sundays. Um, we could definitely look at having a mod. So if we want to do that for a future uh, live, absolutely. Um, yeah, people said that's the one. The guy's name is Matt Holcomb. Oh, yeah, Hul uh, Hulkberg. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was going to say his name wrong as well. Yeah, we'll see now when it scrolls over. Look at all the balconies on MSC here. Just balconies for days. Um, balconies for days and days. I like their, their front looks very futuristic. Whenever I look at it, I always think of that as... And we'll see here, that's the Royal Caribbean offices right there. You can just see on the building roof there. Royal Caribbean Cruises Limited. And there's the actual logo there. I don't know why they don't utilize having the uh, facility on the other side here. I guess their terminal's further out here. Let's, when we looked at that other shot there, look how much room the... Uh, what did we say it was? The ecstasy? The elation? Ecstasy? What was the one that was pulling in? Oh, the sensation. We, uh, yeah, this port pier over here. I think Mariner's not got any guests on board. I think that's empty and... Not going anywhere at the moment. There we'll see Horizon right there with the blue livery on the on the bow. So that's kind of cool. And Disney with its two funnels and one that's real and one that's not. Yeah, one of these is basically just a dummy funnel to make it look like the older ships. Um, can you see off here now? There's one, two, three. I think is it four ships? Let's go back to that. Oh, let's go. Oh, sorry. We're looking at the wrong map, weren't we? The, uh, sorry for going fast. Yeah, it's the, the Ecstasy is the one that's pulling in. Yeah, there's Norwegian Star, Norwegian Pearl, and Norwegian Getaway out here off South Beach. That's a pretty crazy shot. Imagine being at the beach there and how close they look. Uh, yeah, so NCL's got a pause um in their operations at the moment you can see all the cargo side of the uh, dodge island here that's the new ncl terminal then that's the royal one there are they building something else again down here i don't think so now but um i forgot the name of that island over here the map tell us the name of that island fisher island that's the one where all the luxury uh, apartments and condos are and famously, um, Boris Becker. I'd always say, I'd tell that story. Boris Becker had a place there. Um, yeah, Royal Promenade. That's what they call it on Royal Caribbean. The Royal Promenade. Yeah, and they, and they have like um, like parades there, don't they? They parade the uh, entertainment staff, and they have like parades on the Royal Promenade, and they bring out the. Uh, there's a little walk bridge. Where they bring out the uh, the senior officers on one of the nights of the cruise. Um, yeah, let's pull up. 
Now, Fable Cruising has a YouTube channel, and we're going to take a quick look. Oh, have I got it spelled wrong? No, it's right there. Oh, and you've changed the, what do you call this, the, the, the oh, I don't know, <laughs> the little circle right there. Maybe you can work on doing the, um, doing the channel banner here as well. You rename some of these, I see. So how many of this is Aqua Theater, Carnival Panorama, Skyride? There we go. Now we're cooking. Carnival Bliss Casino. So yeah, by naming the uh, the channel here, it gives you some um, better reach, and also people who may be searching for something will find the uh, the website, the um, the cabin by. Uh, typing that in. So 10202 is a Carnival Panorama. So let's have a look. Carnival Panorama Cabin 10202. I think you uh, did you go on the horizon in that cabin as well? Look at that. And your cabin comes up first when you search there as in the search terms. And then actually one of mine snuck in down here. I don't know why, but uh, the one thing that you could do now is add tags. So if you've got the YT Studio app, they, uh, YouTube does say that tags don't matter or it doesn't add a lot of influence in the searching of the uh, videos, but it might be worth uh, putting in tags. Can you see here? On this panorama one, and if you look at my one here, I put Carnival Horizon, Horizon Cabin, Family Harbor, uh, Carnival Horizon Cabin Number, Carnival Panorama Cabin Number to for it to catch that search. So if someone typed something else in, it would come up. So yeah, you can see here, uh, Balcony Cabin. I, I just like putting the name of the ship first, personally. And I think that really makes complete sense to watch the video back. So... Yeah, there we go. Let's go back to where we were. We're going to go back to Port of Miami Live. We'll see that wide shot there now of all the ships in port. So yeah, so far everybody, I want to thank everybody for watching the live stream. We've got four people live. That's kind of four more than I kind of expected. Uh, I hope you like this kind of uh, format. Um, should we pull up some more photos that we were looking at? Where is my photo? It's gone. That's a problem. I don't remember. No, we don't want that one. We need that one. Let's come over to pictures, my desktop. Let's see if we can get these photos up, shall we? Um, Carnival Horizon. Photos. Yeah, this is kind of one we could look at. This is the shops on board Carnival Horizon, or one part of the shops. This is the jewelry side with all the costume jewelry. Alex and Annie there. This is the lobby bar. Actually, this is right after the show. Can you see um, the cruise director up there? Um, right there, up on the bar. <laughs> That's one of the inside cabins. I did a lot of the videos. Uh, um, kind of gives you a good idea of the difference here between the twin beds uh, where they put the... Uh, on the one side they put the the side tables and if you go to the next one how they put them in the middle and then put the beds on either side as two singles. If you might watch the uh, Cabin Secrets video You'll see how I point out, it's, you can almost see it on this video here. Can you see here where the cursor is? That cable right there? Um, uh, you can see the uh, uh, cable that runs to a 220 plug from these lights. And you can unplug it and plug in an adapter and use it as an extra 220 plug. This is the forward bow of the horizon here. This is actually the crew area right here. Uh, you'll see some crew just sort of having a coffee, hanging out. 
I don't think anyone has ever used that shower for the jacuzzi, but it's there anyway. Uh, that's the pool there at night time, where they take all the chairs away for deck washing. That's kind of neat. There's the screen right there. A little bit blurry. You can see the, uh, the pool, the uh, Dr. Zeus water slides. I've done a review of that as well, which is a very cool video if you want to check it out. Self-promoting. Sorry, everybody. Um, this is up at the uh, clubhouse. They've got this. This is actually a giant mini football, I guess, pool table football. But it's you can kick these balls around. And play a giant pool, the clubhouse at Sports Square. Here's the guy doing sushi, showing us how they make sushi. This is actually in the crew mess, and actually this is the staff mess on the horizon. And once per voyage, one of the cooks from the passenger area comes down and does make sushi for crew and he makes rolls and basically that's rather than you see someone here just having a look what's on the line for dinner and he's doing sushi right there this is the white night on carnival horizon so if you're wondering how it looks they put all this like uh, balloons up here and then obviously everyone gets these glow sticks and people are dressed up and it, it's actually a lot bigger area and a lot crazier than it looks in the photographs. I think my photos are understated a little bit. Here's Mike Pack, who was the cruise director at the time. Everybody kind of all around. He's got some music going and everybody dancing and there's the balloon drop and you can see how much he's sweating here. Have a look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot more cooler than it looks right here. I'm going to say the photos kind of doesn't make it look as amazing as it really is. And then they throw all these balloons down and everybody spends the next half an hour popping them all. <laughs> oh, let's go through these. That's the back pool deck on Horizon. Tides bar. Maybe not exciting photos, I don't think, for some, but there's the basketball court. It's one of the passenger corridors. This is where actually where I live on deck one. This is actually the very back of deck one, though. That's the forward jacuzzi where the crew area is. Which pretty much never gets used by anybody. Literally nobody. This is actually one of the ports in Europe here. Uh, these are kind of the ships sailing off. So this is a uh, pre-show before... Uh, I forgot the name of the show now. They've got these violins that play in the main show. Um, I like these... Uh, luggage tags. So anytime I see them, I get quick photos of them. Yeah, this is a good example of the uh, ship with the the cabin with the um, the Pullman beds down, how they fold out of the the ceiling and then they put the pillows here. The only thing is that lower berth is very close to where you sleep. So as long as you can deal with that if you're the the, the parents, I guess, with the kids upstairs, it's good. There you go, that's the beds made. That's the ship in Italy. There's a good shot of the bow of the ship as we sailed off there. There we go, we won't go through all of them because there's a lot of pictures. I hope you like these kind of things. Um, yeah, parades. And a whole bunch of fun stuff. Yeah, they use that royal promenade for parades. Uh, yeah, the little circle is no longer a B. It's a picture of Carnival Panorama in Mazalan. Right, yeah, you had that letter B there. So that's kind of fun that you don't do that. Um, oh, Judy's looking at that picture where she'd bump her head. I think that's kind of relevant, I think. Um, it's not as probably... It doesn't look as big a gap there. It's probably... Uh, you know, I guess it's a bit deceiving, and I guess if you're in the middle, you're okay, but, um, yeah, is, Mar uh, is Mariner having a drink package? I've no doubt they do have a drink package. Again, you might want to look at your booking, and they'll have a per person per day rate, and then, like with carnivals, it's 15 drinks per day up to a certain value. It may be worth, especially if you're a drinker, most of the time the drink packages, it's about five, sorry, maybe six, 
seven or eight drinks to break even on the price that you pay. Um, that's probably definitely worth looking into if you are a drinker in some kind. Um, you know, six or seven drinks, if you know that's how many you drink per day, it would break even pretty easily. Um, there's a lot of photos in Europe here. So This is the ship in Barcelona. This is the new, let's say, brand new terminal that they built in Barcelona. And it, we were the first ship to use that facility when we pulled in there. It was brand new. Literally, the you can see the tarmac hasn't even dried. Uh, literally, the day before we arrived, they were still doing sort of work on it. Um, and to see even how new it looks here, where everyone was just didn't know where the taxis to drop off. It was so simple design. Um, there's the jewelry store. Looking back in the watch store. Yeah, a lot of luxury brands on Horizon there. Hublot, Breitling, Rolex. There's the jewelry shop on the other side. So once per cruise, the ship has, uh, they use this uh, light sphere and they can project any image they like on it. And then once per cruise, they have a Victoria's Secret event and they can project. This is the first ever, this is actually kind of unique. It's the first ever time they projected a brand onto this light sphere. And they do it for Victoria's Secret because the shop, it's the only ship in the world with the Victoria's Secret on board. <laughs> There's the DJ. Uh, I run around and get photos while I'm should be working. This is actually where they uh, convert the main theater into a crew lounge. They put these giant curtains up for the seating. And that's actually the bar there. This is the main theater, and then they take away all the chairs and they make it into a dance floor. And the crew have a party in there. They de they never use these curtains for any other thing on the ship ever. So if you are going on the horizon or you haven't been on it, there's another view of the, uh, the party. He was the, uh, the DJ at the time. I think maybe he's taken a photo of, of Mike there. And there's the balloon drop. There she is. And this is the crew area out the front of the ship. This is the other show now where they have the show um, and they do a photo again for everybody. Nice photos, I think. So I hope this is kind of a little bit of interest. I think maybe it's boring for some, but... Um, I wonder... There's some Carnival Triumph ones. I have some of the Triumph at the end before it was uh, torn down. If that makes sense. Um, let's see if we can get to them. This is the last cruises here in New Orleans. This is actually the, I think this is the library if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember now the actual place where it was here. This is where they were storing all of the stuff to do the cabin remodeling. Um, they actually did a lot of the cabins ahead of the uh, refit of the ship, or the final refit. And they basically stockpiled all of the things they needed for each room to do, and then they just grabbed each piece of equipment as they needed it, because they just knew they were going to do 500 rooms, they could have 500 of everything. And then they basically craned everything up to the pool deck here. And little did they know that it was two years later that the uh, the ship would basically not end up back in service. This is the main theater, so if you don't know on Radiance, um, they tore out the lower of deck three, and the theater is only deck four and deck five. So this edging right here is where deck four would be. And then they put a, a, a um, flooring in here, and then this whole deck three area they tore out and then they put cabins here. So this is guest service will be down here and this is forward of deck three. And they literally had done this overnight. The guests were still on board. They closed the theater that morning and they literally just tore everything up. And the idea was to get all this garbage out before the ship left for Europe. Um, let's go the other way, will we? 
Mm. You'll see here, this is in the lounge where they were pulling all the ceiling panels down. They were stacking all the chairs. And how quickly they got all the carpet up. They took all the... Uh, they took all of this stage lighting down here to get all the lights. Let's see all the lights right here. Um, yeah, this is the last night on the Triumph, the last show that they had. It's kind of a bit of a momentous night, I guess, knowing there wasn't going to be another show. This is how they test the uh, the cranes for the uh, life rafts and lifeboats. Um, yeah, it's amazing what they can do, Julie. You're right. Yeah, the little did they know they weren't going to get back to sailing two, almost two years later. You know, what they do, they actually put a water bag and then they weight test the, the crane hooks and then the cables. And these guys are from the, uh, the shipyards that do the testing. And then that's how they can know that the cranes and everything are capable of Holding the, the, can you see the davit arms here? These are called davit arms. And then the hooks, right there. And that's them testing. That's the main promenade on the horizon. Oh, sorry, on the Triumph, which is now no more. It's everything was torn out completely from this and thrown away. I guess you could say. That's a couple of guests. <laughs> You can see here, we've got the cranes out. Um, so there's the fantasy class ships, which are almost no more. And this is Cozumel here. Paradise. Paradise is, is interesting. Can we see the logo or not? So it was built as a non smoking ship. And they had. A smoke and non-smoking logo. I think we can't see it anymore. They had it still welded into the. Is it over here somewhere? Uh, into the side. There's the Triumph in New Orleans. And this is actually some of the cabins where they'd started to tear out the rooms. They closed off some parts of the deck one, deck two, and different places. And they literally gutted out the uh, the paneling here, and they what they do they they leave the panels. It's actually written on them here as well, and then they put it looks like a plastic contact sheeting onto the walls. And if we've got another photo further along, they just tear out the rooms. They've kept some of the paneling that they know they needed and not needed. This is the bathroom that they've literally just ripped up, so they sort of leave the structure of the room. And then they put the molding back in. That's actually the theater. You can just see the uh, the tables and chairs there, which were gone in the next video or so. And you can see how it's all in place. And then in that other video, it was gone, finished. And here they are taking away the lighting now. Um, and that's the corridor right there. And then these are the um, service panels for each room. And they've just popped open so that they can access them. Yeah, this is a good example here. So you can see how the corridors look when they tear them apart. And then have a look right here. And see how it looks magically when it's back together again. This is the look of Carnival Breeze that I was talking about. This baby breeze look. How they've kept that very simple looking colouring. How nice it can look when it's done right. There we go, that's a good example again. This is not the same corridor, but just to show you that um, before and after, it's kind of very interesting. There's another cabin view. You can see how the, where the beds and the paneling was and the TV and uh, this would have been an adjoining cabin here. So that's the door to the adjoining cabin. And they've just left, they've marked up the cabin number and left the paneling so they know where it goes. rooms right there they leave the mattress frames in so they know what they've got to do and certain things they can reuse and most things they can't and that's the electrical paneling right there pulled out that's where they pulled out the bathroom 
literally just pull it, rip it out. They, it honestly looks like they're doing construction on land. Um, so yeah, Shane's asking what ship this. This is Carnival Triumph, uh, which became the Radiance. So back two years ago, I was on it um, when it finished its last cruises before it was going over to Italy. Uh, I would love to have gone over, but they basically took all the the guy, all the staff who really were usable and put me on another ship. Um, actually, I think I went to Horizon. And they had a team on board of shipbuilders who were already doing all the cabins. So if we go back to that picture here... Oh, uh, no, which one was it? Here. So they'd already done whole decks of the cabins before the ship even reached... Actually, went to Spain, didn't it? To Novata Shipyard in, uh, in Spain... And then they basically stopped all because of COVID. They didn't even keep going. They all sort of shut down for quite a long time. So they'd actually done whole corridors and put them into service. This is deck two uh, forward, roughly forward. So they'd already done whole decks already before the ship even reached the start of the dry dock. Um, and a lot of people didn't even know that. There was people that were cruising on the last cruises. And then they saw they're in these rooms, these cabins right here. You can see someone's even put a cup outside. Um, and they wouldn't have even known that. Um, um, they didn't even know that they were in newly refurbished rooms because they basically close off a whole port side or whole starboard side of the ship and then do the, uh, the remodeling. And they're able to do it. It's what's called in service. So they can do the remodeling in service. Um, and then have the rooms put back together. They that, that original, original photos where you saw all the tubing and all the piping and everything stacked up. They'd, they'd pre-determined everything they needed. They had it all brought on board. And they had a team of guys that literally just went room to room to room. And doing this around the clock. And it was just insane. Uh... That I met these guys quite a lot because I, I sort of uh, take a bit of an interest in seeing this. This is obviously all closed off, but I was kind of say very privileged to be able to go and get photos of it. You can see the old uh, look here uh, of the corridors before they pulled down all of this um, structures to bring back uh, this. Where's that other room photo? Because that's pretty neat. So we go from this one to this one. <laughs> Look at that for a difference. Yeah, that's the corridors right there. This is deck one. This is my cabin down here. So I traversed this deck so many times. And then before the ship obviously went to dry dock, they don't do maintenance in the months leading up to it. That's very common for all cruise lines. It's cost a uh, deli, deli's, deli dozier, I always say, but it's not spelt like that. This is in Cozumel. It's Costa, which is a carnival corporation ship. Yeah, there you can see the colouring on the lifeboats and then the railings here where they just they there's no need to do the maintenance knowing that the ship will be completely re repainted and stripped back and everything. So Yeah, this is actually in New Orleans is this in New Orleans? Yeah, where they're bringing on the uh, the stuff for the cabins. You see here contractors or oh, IT officers. There you go, that'll be all of the Computers that they would have been upgrading, or uh, sometimes even the TVs come like this as well. You can see them craning it on. They actually, these are the guys that were working on the cabins. So they were bringing in stuff. They built themselves a makeshift uh, gantry here. They took away one of the lifeboats for it. So one lifeboat was missing, but they had an intentional gantry set up so they could bring on the, the stuff every New Orleans, sort of for months beforehand, actually. It was, this is Progresso. Yeah, there's the corridors right there. I think we might get to the end. That's the uh, the forward here. That's the crew area down the front there. And there's the famous view of New Orleans. You know, very old looking carnival water slide. It's very traditional looking. See, every ship has a forward, uh, has a uh, coin. These guys had a $2 note. Two dollar bill, um, but it's a secret where it is on the ship. There's the skybox, and that's New Orleans. Back to Cozumel. That's the back of the 
Little Dino Deck. I'm pretty sure they've changed this now and they've put the they've made this into a restaurant at the back if I'm not mistaken. These are all the computers that they brought on the pan you know, the pallets and pallets of stuff. And everything's got somebody's name on it somewhere belonging to a department. You'll see casino right down the back there. Um and everybody's got a, a job name on it somewhere that tells you who it belongs to and someone figures it out. So put a look in the cabins there, the coffee shop. And there we go. Let's go back and have a look at the webcam. Um, oh, Mercedes, how are we going? Oh, welcome, Shane. Yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of an explanation. It's a little bit of an insight into the construction of the uh, ship itself. Uh, well, not the construction of the ship, but the remodeling of the Triumph before it even reached the shipyard. So, yeah, um, I think it's very, very interesting. They've zoomed in the camera a whole lot now. What we could probably do in another live stream, maybe on one of the Sunday streams, we could. Uh, I've got a lot of photos of the horizon from the... Uh, from the shipbuild in Italy. I went there two weeks before the ship came out. And, of course, uh, while we're not working, I walk around the ship, literally, and take photos of everything I could possibly take photos of. So, um, I hope my... People always say that when you look... I'm using my webcam. I am working on a, a better microphone. I have already here. But I need to get a different cable to plug in the microphone. So, my goal is... My my dream. <laughs> I even told my wife it earlier on an hour, two hours ago. Um, it's very hard to get a lot of things in Russia that seem so simple to get on Amazon here. They have instead of Amazon here, they've got Wildberries, which is their online shopping websites, and they've got Ozon, O Z O O Z O M. So you can order online. It's pretty much you know everything under the sun. You can order from a couple of websites, but I want to get a a boom arm with a microphone like you see people that are doing live streams um, and I have this dream <laughs> to uh, if ever I get super chats or stickers or whatever all these things are that that money is going to go towards it so and on the last, last live stream uh, two people donated <laughs> so the money's already put aside uh, for that um, <laughs> so yeah and I I told my wife, because it's in rubles, not in dollars, you know, it's, what was it? There's, I've seen a, a cheaper boom arm and mic, which is 5,000 rubles, about $100. And the one I really want is around about $300. It's a Rode microphone, R-O-D-E, Rode. And Rode actually is an Australian company, believe it or not, <laughs> that made their microphones in Australia, and yet they don't have a way to buy them in Russia through their websites. So I'm now trying to find a local um, electronics store in Moscow that I can go to look at them and see how much more they are here. Um, but I, it's about the boom arm and the mic, and then the cables to plug into the computer. About it's going to be about three hundred dollars. Um, and then if I can get a camera to do the streaming, uh, like an SLR or digital camera, um, I can live stream through my phone. But it relies on the Wi-Fi and internet, and I don't want to rely on that as much. So I have a dream, of course, to get that going better. So um, yeah, um, Mercedes, how are we going? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thanks. Uh, it is Saturday night here. We are watching a live video of the Port of Miami. Uh, we are a bit limited to what that view is. This is the uh, Carnival Horizon, which is what we're really looking at. We may end up going long enough to see it sail off. I don't know. I don't think so. The plan was not to do that, but um, yeah, we looked at a few photos and we looked at the port, and seeing what ships are in port. Yeah, I'm doing well. It's 11:30 in the evening here, which is perfect time for you guys in America if you're watching. I'm not sure where everybody's exactly from. You can put that in the chat. I'll just let you know that it's currently minus three outside. And it's a very nice, oh, it's 28 in here. It's actually a little bit warm. We normally like it at about 25 degrees in the kitchen. I've got the kitchen door closed. And we have like a central heating in here, so it gets very warm. You know, the, the heated pipes. 
They have heated water running through the pipes in our apartment building. And because it's only minus three, the heating gets a little bit stronger. And I'm looking out the window here to see the snow. It's not snowing, is it? It is lightly snowing outside. Light snowing. Um, so it's not as snowing as it is. What I can do, if you guys want to see, is um, if you're interested, this is my um, my screen view, which is the Mardi Gras and the Magic together in uh, La Romana. No, not in La Romana, in um, uh, where is that now? I don't know. I'm not remembering everything in my head a million like I should be. Let's have a look at this picture here. <laughs> this is in, this is a nice photo. This is me today in going out today in oh, let's go a little bit bigger. This is the snow today when I went for a walk to the uh, shops and back just to give you an idea of how much it was snowing in the afternoon. Um, yeah, that is in Celsius, by the way. So zero is what uh, is 30, 66 to six Fahrenheit, Bear boy is saying. So yeah, we're at about, I guess that's what, about 20 Fahrenheit. Uh, this is in Celsius. Sorry not to confuse you. Um, yeah, so New York's on, at zero, I guess, Celsius. There we go. What do we got? It's a chilly, it's chilly in South Florida, 69. Oh, it's not that warm there. What? Looks nice. I guess it's, on the, I guess it's a little bit sort of early afternoon now. Um, yeah, this is me going for a walk. Where's the other photo? I just took a couple of pictures here. Where are we? Yeah, that's the church and the Christmas tree. The lights aren't on. The lights are on the tree now. I can see it from here, out the window. And that's the local church. And then there's a memorial here. Every town in Moscow has a memorial to fallen soldiers, I guess. Um, and this actually is uh, Lenina Street. Oh, actually, I think the other photo. Oh, let's go that way. Sorry, yeah, that's the memorial right there. And then these would have all been local people that maybe fought wars for the Russians. Are we going the right way? Yeah, this is Ulitsa Lenina Street. That's a shame. Oh, we can zoom in a little bit. There you go. This is the walk that I had today going to the shops off in the distance here. Um, and these, these are actually pot plants, but they look like ice creams. Uh, you can see how much the snow's fallen in the last couple of weeks here. They do clear these paths, but obviously today they hadn't because it was just falling like crazy. Um, and that's actually, uh, this is one of the very old Russian... Um, so these over here, these are five-story buildings. These don't have elevators. These are kind of the... Uh, they're called Khrushchevkas. Khrushchevkas. And then this is one of the buildings before that. This is an old wooden... Um, building for me that needs pulling down but I guess they are all happily living there and there's actually there was a lady sitting out here you can just see her on a chair right here and she just sits out there just catching the uh, afternoon weather I guess uh, when I walked past yesterday it was an older guy that's always there every day and he tries to speak to me in Russian and I have no idea what he's saying to me um, yeah, these are the photos I sent to my mum and dad by the way if they're watching, <laughs> um, I think the time difference they won't be now. So, um, yeah, the reason this building hasn't been pulled down is we live in uh, Moscow region. So basically, the the center of Moscow is Moscow in terms of the municipal municipality, and then there's a region called the Moscow region, which is the ring that's the outside area of the Moscow area. I guess you'd call it like San Francisco and then Greater San Francisco or like the boroughs of New York for you guys where you are in different places. And uh, this building, before they rezoned Moscow, this is how old this place is, this was considered Moscow and now it's called Moscow Region. And if it stays intact, it's part of Moscow and the 
prices that they're paying for water, electricity, uh, rent, um, and whatever services are a different rate while it's considered in Moscow. And also their address is Moscow. That makes sense. Uh, whereas our address is Narofominsk or Aprilivka, which is our town. And then Narofominsk is the region. Um, so if they pulled that down and rebuilt something, it would get another address completely. Um, that's why it's never been pulled down. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, yeah, that's Ulitsa Lenin. That's very common in Moscow. All the streets have Lenin Street. Um, and someone jokes that in the future they'll all be Putin streets. Or they'll be renamed. Um, but, yeah, today was crazy snow this afternoon when I went. Actually, that photo there probably gives it more of an idea of the snow. When I went um, big snowing, or Bolshoi Sneg Zimoy. Bolshoi Sneg Zimoy is like beautiful big snow. Let's go back to that tracker right there. So we'll see there, the ones off the harbor there. Norwegian Star. Has it moved? No. Yeah, these are all at anchor, the, the orange ones. And we'll see the Liberty here. So that's doing an itinerary where it's been. Did a little bit of round in circles for a little while. Conquest. Conquest is going around in circles as well. <laughs> magic is coming. Oh, Magic is from uh, Port Canaveral. There we go. See the itinerary that the Magic took. To see. Can you see how they hug the coast of Cuba and Dominican Republic when they come back from the Caribbean? It's just kind of interesting to see there as my request, Encore, Odyssey, Rotterdam and Freedom, they're all following each other in kind of formation there. Now there is one interesting piece of news which I'm going to make a recording on later. And it's on Crystal Symphony. And I don't know if you guys are aware that Crystal is one of the few six star ships. If you watch my live, not my live, but my cruise news from yesterday, I talked about how the Crystal ships, um, how the three uh, ships have now been pulled out of service and they've cancelled all their cruises through until April. And this. Crystal Symphony, one, there's three of them. There's one that's in Bermuda, uh, sorry, one that's going to be in Aruba. I think it's over here somewhere. Or is it already in Aruba? No, Ocean Riviera. Anyway, the Crystal ships. Unselect. Does I have them on here? Man. There we go, Crystal. Where are you now? Yeah, so Crystal Serenity is on an itinerary at the moment. It's going to end in Aruba. No, sorry. Uh, it's going to end in Aruba. And then the guests are going to get off. There's no more cruisers. And then it's going to end up in... Uh, it's going to basically then cease operations. The parent company is essentially going to be... It's, I don't think it's filed for bankruptcy, but... They probably will. And then the other crystal ship here was meant to come back to Miami. And if you are aware of the coast of Florida, this is Bimini, which is an island off the coast of Florida here. And also Bimini is used now. Carnival brings a few ships there. And there, the somebody, uh, one of the companies in Florida has filed a court order for unpaid fuel payments against Symphony, uh, against Crystal Cruises. And they put a court order against, against Symphony to be arrested until, I think they owe about a million dollars in fuel, outstanding fuel bills. And the ship diverted, instead of going back to Miami, it's diverted to Bimini because it's not in any U.S. waters. And then legally they can't <laughs> be arrested, if that makes sense. And the plan was all the guests were going to get off, because the guests who are on board now, 
and they were going to use a ferry. They've got a ferry service that runs across daily um, back to Miami, and then they were going to bus them then to either the uh, Fort Lauderdale or Miami airports to send everybody home. So they, um, they've gone to Bimini, which is the Bahamas. I'm pretty sure they're registered in the Bahamas, the ships, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's very interesting that the ship didn't go to Miami in case, obviously, to avoid being arrested, if that makes sense. The ship could be arrested. There seems to be a bit of a wording difficulty on that. So, yeah, we've got some temperatures. Daryl, oh, Daryl's in New York. Daryl, I, well, I keep wanting to say Daryl here. In Australia, we've got Daryl Lee chocolates. So that's why I'm always... Thinking your name here, Daryl. Daryl Lee. Uh, we've got Daryl Lee chocolates. Um, so yeah, it's uh, chilly in South Florida, sixty-nine. Uh, San Francisco is sixty-six to six Fahrenheit. I don't know how you've got that going on there. Oh, it's sixty-six in San Francisco. Okay. New York, we're on thirty, so that's about minus one. So it's probably maybe the same as Russia, Moscow here. This is a, the ideal temperature for snowing is about zero or minus five. So this is uh, kind of warmed up a little bit. Um, that photo of me in the snow there isn't really as cold as it really is because of the snow. Uh, Daryl says, I'm going on the Mardi Gras on August 30th. Wow. So it should be amazing. Um, there's enough people now with feedback if you're maybe in the cruise groups. I'm not sure. So... Um, it's very cold in New York today. It's three thirty. Oh, and Mercedes is going on the Mardi Gras on April thirteenth, and Daryl's given a super sticker. Super sticker. I don't know where you put this. Can I pin it somewhere? Uh, four nineteen. Wow, five dollars. Oh, this is going into my my microphone fund. My future microphone fund. So, I wonder if you're hearing nicely or not. It, it probably echoes in here. That's the biggest thing that I can't get around. Unless I put, I wrap myself in like a bed sheet, you know, like to get rid of the echo. So, massive thank you, Daryl. Um, sorry, I keep wanting to, I want to say Daryl here over and over. Um, um, where I play tennis in Australia at my local tennis club, this is my, my Daryl reference. Um, there was only two left-handers that played tennis at Fremantle Lawn Tennis Club. And one was Daryl Power, and I'm the second left-hander at the entire tennis club. There was two of us. So, um, yeah, that's my reference to Daryl, apart from Daryl Lee Chocolates. So, um, yeah. So let's go back. We'll have a look how the Miami camera's looking. It's not really an amazing view, but... Um, yeah, massive thank you. You're going to see a new microphone. Um, my wife wanted to know the difference between this 5,000 ruble one, which is about $100. And then if I can get the Rode one, it's called Rode PSA. One is the boom arm. And then I don't know which microphone yet, but it'll be about $300. And my wife's like, just go and buy it. Just pay for it. Get it done with. I'm very, I'm the worst procrastinator about buying things and um, buying, not not necessarily that I don't want to buy nice things, but I'm always checking, reviewing, reading, rereading about them. Um, and it's kind of funny that I'm in um, Russia and I want to buy an Australian microphone. Um, so, oh, this sound, the sound sounds good. Yeah, I think apart from the fact that the, mic, the, the computer here is, you know, it's almost burning up, I would say, <laughs> from me using too many screens. This computer, I've got this Dell laptop. Uh, this is an XPS 15. Um, it's kind of the absolute top of the range Dell XPS laptop that I have. I got this two years ago, right before I got off the dream, before the shutdown. I got it a couple of months before that. I plan to, to order it and have it delivered to an address in Galveston and when I picked it up and how small it is and how thin it is and this aluminum body is just amazing uh, frugal that's the one yes I'm frugal 
my wife would tell me, I guess she'd tell me I'm cheap, uh, but I'm frugal. Um, if you watch Stefan, uh, Graham Stefan, one of the money YouTubers, he talks about it a lot. Um, I mean, I have a nice mic microphone, this mini tripod. I have dual screens here, uh, Dell curved dual monitors. Uh, typically, I have my laptop closed, and then uh, it runs then to the dual monitors. So I can do everything in this little desk. I built my own little home desk here. I actually got a piece of kitchen um, worktop, wooden kitchen worktop. Then I bought IKEA legs and I had it cut down to size to fit in this kitchen spot. And then I can look right out on this balcony. Not a balcony, but just big glass windows looking out to town here. Um, uh, so am I on leave? Yes, I am. I'm. I'm on vacation right now, I guess you would call it. Uh, we don't really call it leave on cruise ships. We call it, you sign off and you go on vacation. We use the American word and then we sign back on again. Um, we do have like leave of absence, LOA. They do use them, but not as much as they probably do like on Navy ships and things like that. So I am on vacation right now. I'm on pretty much an extended vacation. Um, I came back to Australia after the shutdown. It'll be two years in March, April, I guess, since 2020. Uh, if you're wondering what we're looking at over here, if you are new to the stream, we are looking at a live view of Miami downtown, uh, Miami Harbor, and we're looking at all the ships lined up right here um, in Miami, um, and particularly Carnival Horizon in the middle here, which is going to go on its first cruise after its uh, temporary pause where it had some uh, mechanical issues. That's what we're looking at right here. So if you're of interest of Carnival Horizon, yeah, so I, um, uh, when you come back with ships, will you be, uh, what, oh, well, the plan is to be on the Carnival Horizon. Absolutely is the plan. Um, um, the plan is to go back on Carnival Horizon. I was hoping, I'm waiting to get my Russian residency visa. And as soon as that comes through, um, which we're hoping in the next couple of weeks, literally, I can then fly out from here, from Moscow, straight over to Miami um, and join the ship and do my six or eight months on board. And then I can fly back to Russia directly. So I can fly to and from uh, Moscow without having to go back to Australia. Um, that way then I, my, my residency visa gives me then unlimited flights in and out of Russia because the fact I'm married to a Russian, I can, I'm entitled to residency by way of marriage, I guess. That makes sense. Um, okay, uh, Mercedes is leaving. Good to see you. Going to sleep now. Going to work soon. God willing, have a good night. Yeah, yeah, I... Uh, my wife has work in the morning, and uh, I'm probably talking too loud in the kitchen here. She works at a uh, nail salon, actually in our apartment building downstairs. She has her own nail salon, and she operates from a business there that she set up. But uh, she still likes to get her early sleep. Uh, lights out, you know, no TV, no curtains, curtains closed. So, yeah, good catching up. Um... Good catching up, Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes, actually, we did we not meet on Carnival Horizon on one of the cruises? I think we did. Um, how long is the flight from Moscow to Miami? Um, I don't... I should know, and I don't. Shall we find out? Um, we'll find out. Let's go here. Russia, Moscow. Oh, we need flights, not hotels. Dear me, is the airport here? That's the one that's my MIA. <laughs> Let's do one way. We can see how much it is. Let's go next Wednesday, shall we? Done. Search. We'll have a look how long it is to go there. I'm not sure. One way ticket with Lusanza, $700. Uh, that's no, not direct. Connect in Frankfurt. There's no one stop. 
There's no direct flights, so I guess it's going to be Lufthansa. Oh, we can connect through New York. Through. Let's have a look at Lufthansa's one right here. Show details. So Moscow to Frankfurt is three hours and forty minutes, and then Frankfurt to Miami is ten and a half hours. So let's call it fourteen hours. An hour and five minutes in Frankfurt, and then ten hours thirty to Frankfurt to Miami. That's not so bad. First check-in bag, ninety-eight dollars. Wow, there's no check-in bags. That's cheap of them. No, seven hundred and forty dollars for a one-way ticket. So that's not too bad price-wise. Let's have a look for. Day before, I guess it's all the same flights every day. We don't have a lot of ways around it. Lufthansa. Yeah, connection. So Frankfurt to Newark to Miami, Zurich. Oh, one stop in Dubai. So Moscow, Dubai is five hours fifteen, and then. Four hours and then Dubai to Miami is 16 and a half hours. 16 and a half hours Dubai to Miami. That's a crazy long flight. I wonder if uh, VM. What is Vanukova? This is my local airport. I don't even think there's even flights. Is there from Vanukova? Oh, Turkish Airlines. So, oh, oh, 400 bucks, one way ticket. There you go, Istanbul. Well, that's even easier. That would be amazing. There you go, 9 p.m. What's that? Three hours and five minutes to Istanbul. An hour in Istanbul, and then 12 hours to Miami. That would be the beautifulest flight in the whole world. If I could do that one, boom, six o'clock in the morning, walk straight on the ship at 9 a.m. <laughs> so that would be quite a trip and a half so yeah eight people live thanks everybody we're at two hours i don't know if anybody wants to keep going or not if you're liking this kind of live stream please let me know if you like this kind of thing um just in case you aren't subscribed the goal of the channel is let's go up here we can just see it can we we're at 8,947 subscribers. My short-term goal is 10,000 subscribers. Uh, and we're 100, sorry, 1,053 away. Uh, so we're still a long way away. But uh, views are up a lot in the last couple of weeks. Can you see these big arrows going up here? Whatever you call these. But that's because I did a few mu uh, these... Um, live streams and I did a few of the uh, the news cruise news videos obviously while I'm in Moscow I can't really do videos on ships because I'm not there so we can feel like we are with the live camera here can't we so um, let's close that let's get my computer not feeling so crazy stressed here I'm running everything too much for the computer but oh, we're down here running them as well well my computer runs like a trooper, so a trooper, is that the right word? Uh, Daryl wants to know, uh, do you prefer warm weather or cold weather? Honestly, I'm not that bothered. Um, today, I really like it when it snows a lot, this uh, Bolshoi Snegger. Snegger is, Bolshoi is big, like Bolshoi Theatre. And then Snegger is snow. It's a big snow. I like snow a lot. Bolshoi Snegs Um I don't like it when it's like minus 15 or minus 20. Um, because it's just too cold. Um, that's Celsius, by the way. So, yeah, once it gets too cold, it's just not enjoyable going anywhere. You know, walking around or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I like... You know, I mean, in Australia now, the funny thing is, uh, in Perth, where I'm from... We've just had uh, five consecutive days over 40 Celsius, which would be 107 or 108 Fahrenheit. Um, 100, 
no, 107, 108 or so, and they've just had four, uh, five days in a row, which is a record in a hundred years. Um, and that's just too hot. <laughs> so it's kind of like extremes. Too hot, too cold. Um, so, yeah, I like like 30 degree days. I like Caribbean weather and just without the humidity, if that makes sense. Maybe 27 Celsius and and dry. That's my ideal day. Um I do like Moscow for the fact you've got seasons. And my wife, we were talking about this today as well, that in Moscow, uh, my wife uh, feels like you've got winter now, you've got autumn, spring, summer, and you have seasons. Um, one thing that's different in Perth, we spent a year and a half there now before we both came back here. So I came back after the shutdown of the ship. She flew about a month or so later. And... That year and a half she spent there, her head got confused with when it's winter and summer because we've got nice weather year round. I mean, it's obviously a little bit warmer in summer and a little bit cooler in winter, but it's not cold, it's cool. And uh, she, um, even we talked about it today, that she got confused with um, when is the winter and when is the summer, when is the autumn, you know. That, uh, in Australia, a lot of the native trees are... Uh, 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 deciduous you know they we have a lot of native trees that don't drop their leaves if that's the right, the right words so you don't sort of see like here for instance uh, when I first arrived all the trees had leaves on them and then they all drop their leaves for winter and then you know it's very you know like very open with all the without the trees without the leaves um, and you know you can see that different in seasons like the same in the Caribbean, you know, I mean, okay, they do have a wet season and a dry season. Um, but you could go every week and have nice weather and not feel like it's a different time of year. Um, so. Uh, Daryl is asking, uh, how are the people in Moscow towards foreigners? Yeah, they, you know, honestly and truly, everybody that I meet are very nice, very welcoming, very pleasant. Um, Ninety... How many? 95%? 98% of people don't speak English. Do not speak any form of English. Barring, you know, do you speak English? Oh, no. Or yes, or little, or don't understand. Um, of course, I mean, what people know of foreign places, like let's say America, Canada, Europe, uh, I mean, Russians do travel, do go on holidays, do see the world. I mean, don't mistake that, they do. Um, I mean, probably 90% of Russians don't. You know, I mean, the very small percentage of people do travel, but they just know Russia. They know everything that Russia's happened to them and, you know, the past, the present, the future, and things like that. And what they know of America is what you watch on TV. You know, what your thoughts about America are, are watching you know, Biden or Trump or Obama and things like that, and watching American movies and seeing, you know, movies filmed in New York and knowing that's what Times Square looks like, that's what, you know, back when the tow uh, the Twin Towers were there, that's what it looks like. Obviously, when you go to New York, that's what it looks like, right? You know, you, it's like you get goosebumps when you're in, in Manhattan because you've seen on TV, you go there, that's what it's like. You know, it's like that here in Moscow. When you go into to the Red Square area, and where the Kremlin is, and the Bolshoi Theater, and um, Leninsky Prospect, and the different sort of main roads there. You know, I mean, it's what you see on the TV. You know, when you see those news crosses where they've got the buildings in the background, I mean, I probably take it for granted when I go for a walk in Moscow, and, you know, I'm looking around, and wow, wow, wow. Um, and I don't know the real history of the buildings, and, you know, I mean, they've got, you know, hundreds hundreds and hundreds of years of history or thousands even you know Australia is only 200 and what are we at 240 years old so we don't have the history like Russia has if I compare Australia and Russia for instance um, I mean the biggest thing that I find in terms of people that you meet here they think I'm American oh Americansky you know American and then when I say Australia they like oh okay it's like a different thought in their head you know they think of kangaroos and you know, what they know, Crocodile Dundee, and there's a boxer called Costa Zoo. Um, 
Yeah, like like you say, Daryl, the Americans, they know John Wayne, right? The Wild West and, you know, they, you know, Dallas and uh, uh, J.R. Ewing and things like that. And, you know, I mean, even here, we, my wife watches, we watch movies on television. We obviously watch them with uh, Russian dubbing and, you know, where they're dubbed into Russian or we watch it with English as well. My wife can understand English perfectly well. So we watch... Like um, Meet the Fockers, you know, we watched that a few times and, um, you know, it's, it's America is America like you see, you know what I mean? And where we live, we forget where we live. It's such a beautiful place. It's where we're from, where we grew up. Um, obviously, there's that unease about this thing with Ukraine now and, you know, the building up of troops on the border. I mean, I live, uh, if I walk from here to the main highway... And funny enough, the main highway that goes into the Moscow center is called Kiev Highway. <laughs> so from Moscow center, it goes uh, to Kiev, excuse me, to, to Ukraine. And it's 800, I think it's about 700 miles from... Uh, Ukraine. I think the distance... It's only, let's go to maps. So this is where we are here. If the map works, my little house on that map. And if I go to Kiev, Kiev, Ukraine. So this is actually to the city, not to the, uh, if we go by car. I'll choose a starting point, home, okay. Is it going to show us here? So it's 906 kilometers by car on the Kiev Highway. So that's actually the border over here, though, with Ukraine. So if I go to cancel that, let's see directions. So it's only 472 kilometers um, to the border of, of Ukraine from where I live. Five hours and 35 minutes. And this is supposedly these areas here where they've got the uh, troop buildups. You know, what do they say today? 10,000 troops that the Russians have amassed around the uh, Russian-Ukraine border. Um, so basically down here. And then here is Crimea, which is the other annex. You can see the map here. So, yeah, I'm five hours and 35. I didn't realize I was even that much closer. I kept thinking 900 kilometers. So I'm only 472 k's from um, the border with Ukraine. So, I mean, am I worried? Not at all, by the way. <laughs> so I probably should be, but I'm not. And that's the... Uh, where I am here, uh, Aprilivka, and then this is the road going into Moscow. These are the ring roads of Moscow here. This is the garden ring it's called, and then this is the uh, Makad. The Makad. Makad is like the main highway that circles Moscow, um, which is insane traffic. I don't think it even shows us how crazy the traffic is. This is light traffic in our area, but that's... It's not so bad today. You can see the red even at midnight on this in the garden. You can see a little bit of traffic. These uh, green um, places are where I want to go visit in Moscow. These couple of green dots here. I wanna, I've got a few places I want to go and visit. So. Um, yeah, shrimp on the barbie, right. Yeah, throw another shrimp on the barbie, which in Australia we don't really have shrimp, by the way. Shrimp is like Louisiana. <laughs> we have prawns. Uh, throw prawns on the barbie. That shrimp on the barbie is so cliched. I'm very sorry to say, but... Uh, yeah, throw shrimps on the barbie. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so if anything happens at the border, you are not far from the action. I'm not. 450 miles. 
Actually, let's just quickly go back to that map. Oh my gosh. I should point this out, how much closer I am. Um, I just need to put M here for maps. So if I go to here, Kalinets. So can you see here, where's my Prolifka? All right, so that's my house right here. This is the town that we can see out the window, if I could see. That's my bus I can catch. So if we go to, go back a little bit, and there's a place here called Kubinka. And that's got a really amazing tank museum. It's got considered, can you see actually if I press Kubinka here, there's a tank museum. And it's got the best tank display in the, well, consider the best tank display in the world. Is there any wide shots? Oh, that's the outside area. And there's a, they've got an indoor facility with amazing, amazing tanks. And, oops, I'm going too fast. It can't keep up. Um, no, they're all the same looking photos, but this is Kubinka. But the whole idea is, um, I've been to this tank museum, by the way, and it's unbelievable. But they actually have um, some um, testing grounds. And quite often in the morning here, if I open, I don't open the window because it's too cold. But if you open the window, you can hear ordnance firing um, from the window of where I live. I mean, this is quite a distance. I'd have to say it's probably, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes drive to get over there. Um, and then the Kal Kaluga, where is Kaluga? There's another area here further down um, where they have uh, ordnance firing and training. They've actually got, you know, regional areas that have, um, you know, um, military training, which they have everywhere, right? They've got military training in America and Australia, everywhere. But you can actually hear them doing the, the, um, the tank shell firing out the window uh, of my apartment here. <laughs> and I know it's actually from a, a local, I guess, firing range, I guess they'd call it. Um, but there actually is towns here in this area that are uh, military towns and they're not even on the map technically so if you actually google over the town you don't see it there but it's basically a fenced off entire town with shops supermarkets you know hospital doctors apartments houses uh, where all of the military kind of live in these towns that you don't know exist and it's just crazy to think so yeah, if you're watching the video live, uh, we're watching the live camera of Miami, or the port of Miami. What time are we at right now in Miami? I probably could just ask somebody. It is currently 4 o'clock, 4.03. Now I'd imagine that some of the ships, so it does actually say here, let's just go back to my view, that the horizon is scheduled to leave at four o'clock. MSC four five o'clock, Magic five o'clock, Symphony five o'clock, Mariner six o'clock, and Norwegian Joy seven o'clock. So there is a possibility that the ship, if we're at four o'clock now, that the ship should sail, give or take. Now, um, I wonder if we're going to catch this live. Um, Um, I'll just skip over that for a minute. Yeah, good to see you're so nonchalant about it. I would be scared and worried. Yeah, I think, you know what? I think, I don't know, I mean, the one thing that my wife tells me over and over and over is don't talk to Russians about Russian history or Russian politics or wars with Russia. Don't talk about it. And I obviously, I don't. But, um... I just don't think anybody's really that bothered. It's kind of like COVID at the moment. You know, I mean, people do wear masks, um, but not everybody wears them. And if you wear them, you wear them on your chin or under your nose. Um, of course, there's still cases here, but it's just not 
people just get on with things. I mean, from the minute I've arrived here till today, literally, you wouldn't see any difference in how people are or acting. We did have a, a lockdown, a 10-day... Um, they didn't call it a lockdown. Non-working days, they called it. And they essentially... Um, <laughs> there was no difference. I mean, they did tell people to work from home. They did... Uh, try to uh, people who have free bus fares and bus passes and train passes like retired people and different people who are entitled to them they locked their bus and train passes so it wasn't free for transport for those 10 days so in theory they didn't go out but people still just paid for their tickets and went <laughs> um yeah so don't yeah so some of the ships are scheduled for five o'clock yeah so i was just looking there where are we let's go back to that yeah, Carnival Horizon 5, Seashore, sorry, Carnival Horizon 4, Seashore 5, Magic 5, Symphony 5, Mariner 6, uh, sorry, Marina, not Mariner, Marina, and Joy at 7. Um, uh, they're off of, uh, medical, yeah, okay, so, yeah, so, yeah, there's a live chat here in this, live chat of the camera that we're looking at but um yeah the plan is that the horizon leaves now so i guess give or take uh, it's meant to sail away now they're probably doing their boat drill i would imagine uh at some point now as well um alex is asking what kind of buffets are on mariner of the seas i Again, I haven't sailed on Mariner, so I don't really, I don't have any sort of uh, feedback. Uh, we can Google, though. I can Google everything and it can come up. It's amazing, isn't it? Let's have a look. So this is very similar to Carnival, though, the buffets for me. This, uh, like a marketplace style. Um... Yeah, the buffet is right there. So these are sort of usually passengers' photos in some form. Yeah, deck plans. These are pretty general photos, so these might be old, but I would imagine it's not too different how the salad bar looks. But it looks good, though. Gluten-free selection. Check that out. Chili beef. Gluten-free chili beef. Cold cuts. I wonder if Mariner was at some point in Asia. Can you see here how above the the signs they have um, in Chinese? Windjammer is the name of their leader restaurant, by the way. Windjammer. These are pretty generic photos, I think. I think we're going to see repeated ones here and there. Cakes look good. Um, yeah, it says that you... Uh, oh, there you go. Okay, and you'll over One move. Horizon on the move. It's like a second maiden voyage. Yeah, Sunshine and Liberty have got cancel cruises. So is it moving or is it not moving? I guess we won't know for a few minutes. We'll let it kind of run. Um, yeah, you well, you can't wear it on your chin on the ship. No, right. Yeah, this is going to be the toughest part. I mean, I was very lucky. Um, the couple of weeks when we had no passengers, where we dropped them off on that last cruise in New Orleans, in Galveston, uh, we didn't have the mask mandates uh, then when we finished the last sailings. Um, there was no cases, absolutely no cases on them last sailings either. So there was no way at, the be at that very beginning of everything there or the start of it all. I mean, that was the w one thing I was stressing a lot to other crew members because they were worried. They're like, oh, we're going to catch COVID. And I said to them there, I said, if there's no cases on the ship, we've got nobody to catch it off. So we can't catch it. 
you know so you know so how can we catch it if we don't have it why are we wearing masks if we don't need to you know that was at the very beginning of course before we knew any better um, yeah Daryl says I, I love to watch the live webcams I love to see the ships cruise ships pull out yeah I don't watch them enough um, I do watch live news webcams like live news from Australia and things like that um, I kind of like to be there. I know that sounds weird. I mean, this is being, you know, um, digitally there now. I can feel like I'm there. Um, I mean, I know where the ship's dock. I've been to this place before. I know these roads and things like that. Um, you know, so yeah, it's it's nice to watch, but I guess it's better to be on the ship at the same time, right? Um, uh, how come Carnival does not leave from New York in the winter? Yeah, so the biggest thing with this is, and I think even John Heels mentioned this and other people, um, it's the weather and the likelihood of, you know, colder weather on the last sea day coming back to New York, or sometimes two sea days, and then the sea days going south, and the overall enjoyment of the cruise goes down. I mean, obviously, if you're from New York and then you get on a ship and it's cold and snowing, and as you go south, it gets warmer and you're happy. That's good. But where people might fly into New York to take the cruise, you know, I mean, they want to cruise for the, you know, the for the ship and for the, you know, thought of it being nice weather and also the unpredictable weather on the East Coast, the, um, is it the Outer Banks, I guess they call that, you know, off the Carolina coasts and the unpredictable weather conditions. Uh, going to and from New York, so uh, they don't. They just do seasonal cruises. I think it's around. Let's call it summertime, for instance. They were doing Norfolk and then New York uh, when they do the repositioning sometimes. So yeah, it's really about the weather conditions on those days around the New York turnaround day. That's the big sort of factor why. Um, so. Bebel says, uh, Russell, I'm sailing on Carnival Miracle in August out of San Francisco. Where is Carnival Miracle right now? Uh, Miracle is on its way back from Hawaii, isn't it? Let's close that. Let's open that. It should be. Whoops. Let's just close that so we know where it is. We'll just go to select all. Yeah, the Miracle just finished her, her Hawaiian cruise. A Hawaiian cruise. And I think this is its last... Yeah, you'll see here. It did a big circle around the big island. And it went to... Actually, it doesn't show all the stops it did. Yeah, it does. Honolulu. Uh, Lahaina. Hilo. Kona. And it's got the trip all the way back. And it's... Is it pulled in or is it? I oh, know it must be pulling in. Oh, it arrives back tonight, 10 p oh, Ensenada, 10 p.m. tonight. So, yeah, the reason that it does that is because the ship has to go foreign. So it does a uh, Mexico stop for uh, technical reasons because of the the ship has to go foreign to avoid the Jones Act, where a uh, non-U.S. flag ship has to travel foreign. I'm not sure what their schedule is. It says arriving at 10 p.m. today. And if I go here to itineraries. So yeah, I know it was in Hawaii because I've got friends who are on board. The crew couldn't get off. So I don't know how many day cruise that was. It's sailing a 14 day round trip Hawaii cruise. Um, and the crew couldn't get off in any of the ports of call in Hawaii. So they did, I don't know, five sea days each way, I guess, how many it was. Yeah, left on the 9th of January. And yeah, five sea days to Honolulu. And then I think five sea days back. Yeah, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. it says. I guess it's going to do a quick stop in Ensenada for the stamp of the paperwork. And then it's going to go straight on to L, uh, to Long Beach. If you go down a bit more here, you'll see these are the next cruises. So it's got four and five day cruises and another Hawaii. 
four and five day and then it's got Alaska then and Alaska Mexico Alaska oh, Alaska season so there you go oh from San Francisco that's kind of cool oh there you go so yeah sailing on miracle out of San Francisco so that's pretty cool yeah I know the crew couldn't get off in any Hawaiian port so that really would have sucked I know uh, a couple of people that work in the shops there and they posted photos from the open deck um, and I think a lot of crew hoped that they'd get off because of the fact they did so many days at sea that would effectively count as quarantining um, um, and they couldn't get off yeah 14 days is a long cruise not to get off the ship um, Daryl says, where do the crew members get vaccinated? Do they get vaccinated from the ship? No, they get vaccinated in the home ports. So, for instance, where the ships are in Miami, they get off in the cruise terminals and typically have kind of like a setup where they've got the tables and chairs there and they bring, I would imagine they probably use uh, local clinics where they contract them to come to the terminals and administrate the, the vaccines. Um the crew pretty much are encouraged to do it at home when they were on vacation now, um, whether they could or couldn't, for instance. Um, but basically, otherwise, where they were on contract before and during the shutdowns, they were getting vaccinated in the ports, um, like in Galveston or in uh, Miami, Port Canaveral or wherever it was. So they would have they're probably using local clinics that would come. And then they all crew members all walk off hundreds at a time. And they do whatever is the needed vaccines. You know, this, uh, I think Johnson and Johnson, I think, was the one one of my friends said he got. So, uh, there else says, I live in New York and I, I'm, and I love leaving from New York. I love the fact that I don't have to take a flight. I don't mind paying extra, a simple Uber to Manhattan. Yeah. Sailing out of New York and going under the Verrazano Bridge and how much the ship misses the, uh, the pier by. Um, let's pull up. Where is my picture? Oh my gosh, now I can't see. I wonder. Is it on here? I have a photo of the horizon going under the Verrazano Bridge. But I don't know which folder it is. Is it here? Sorry, I'm just going to quickly scroll through these. There it is. That's it going under the Verrazano Bridge in New York. And that's how much it misses by. Perhaps it's going to go under there. <laughs> Actually, the kids are doing the uh, the ropes course at the same time. And you can see the antennas here. I mean, it's probably a bit of bigger distance than it really looks. But it literally misses by a coat of paint. And it's probably the best five minutes. Um, that's a kind of pretty cool photo. Looking back at Lower Manhattan here. These are all my photos, by the way. These aren't press photos. You can see Lower Manhattan right there. And then over to New Jersey. There's the Brooklyn Bridge over there. And that's the ship going out there, coming towards the bridge. And then kind of missing the earlier photos. Yeah, there you go, that's the pretty cool view right there. That's the money shot right there, I think. Um, yeah, they start in spring and then usually finish around about early fall. Yes. Can we tell? Can we get Russell? Uh, can we help help Russell get his microphone, please? And thank you. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to need like sound blanket. Well, I think we just need to put down a bit more. We have like a rug here with uh, behind where our sofa is. Um, these are famous oranges. Everybody has oranges at Christmas time in Moscow, like mandarins. So yeah, this is actually, it's a sofa bed, so it's pretty common that you have it in here. Um, uh, 
there, there's some trampoline on Mariner. Yes, there is. Oh, and you've given another four ninety nine. Daryl, thank you a million, by the way. Uh, this will come as part of the monthly um, like Google Analytics. But this money is going to be microphone money all the way. Um, so, yeah, there's trampolines on the Mariner. Oh, okay. So we have a quick look. We're not missing the ship pulling out. It's not happening yet. Name of the ship. Um, Trump. Oh, I think it's that circular looking strange thing, isn't it? Sorry if I call it that. Yeah, this is the thing here, this circular thing. Yeah, this is the. There you go. That's Mariner's trampoline. Oh, look at that. And this lady's got like uh, VR goggles on as well. How cool is that? I guess you kind of like combine it. That would be very weird and very disorientating, I think, to have them goggles on. And that's it at night there, which I... Yeah, I reckon that's very disorientating. I guess it kind of, you look at some other video of you doing that without the goggles on. <laughs> I'm laughing now because it looks weird, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that's it right there in the middle. I think this is one of the press photos. This one is like not a real picture of the, the ship. Skypad, that's the name. There you go. The water slide looks cool though. I, I don't know if they've got a fee for that. I imagine they probably do. Um, does it come up on Royal Caribbean? Trampoline attraction. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I guess we can't see it sailing off. Now, one thing that will probably happen is the ship will sail up the uh, the harbour here and do the turnaround in the basin and then sail off because the actual the way out's this way, right? So. I don't think it'll pull out and spin around right there. It'll come up and turn around and leave. But it's not pulled away yet. So, um, oh, you have a video of it. Oh, there you go. So you, I think maybe I left. Oh, so maybe I think I know you from when we were on Horizon, not Vista. So maybe we met on Horizon, I think. I left on the Horizon and Vista and the Splendor from New York. And I was on the Vista with you in 16. Yeah, I was not on the Vista. Because the shops on board are a different company. So... How much is the Johnny Rockets total? Oh my gosh, you're asking tricky questions. <laughs> on the Mariner. <laughs> Alexis. Um, <laughs> uh, I think... We looked there at the menu, didn't we? Um, JMH Rockets menu. No, oh, that's. Uh. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Well, not, maybe we're not going to see. What? Not football? Oh, maybe you can scroll down. Can you? Yeah, see the menu. Let's look at the menu. There we go. Does it have the prices? No, it 
doesn't have the prices on there, so I guess we'll just have to go by the um, the dining there and just go by what we know was the onboard activities. Yeah, for all ships probably, isn't it? Cruise life. Dance classes, H2O zones, tidal wave, flow rider, table tennis. So I guess we'll just have to go by that original one that we looked at, Alexis, where it mentioned the uh, price. Um, before let's go let's see if anybody else is catching this as live as we are probably not officially 2300 on board yeah we already kind of know that bit we kind of cheated a little I was hoping someone else might have posted photos, but nobody has. I'm in the group for the ship sailing. 636 in this group. So I guess nobody's posted. Oh, have they? There we go. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> A couple of people have posted. I guess there's some meet and greets from the group. Somebody in Havana cab in there. I think everyone looks happy. What do you think? <laughs> Someone in their cabin. There you go. We're not far away, I don't think. All right, everybody. Daryl, if you're still here, Bebel Cruising, if you're still here, we're down to two people. Um, Alexis, if you might be still here, I don't know who's come and gone in the time. Uh, I'm going to thank everybody for watching. Um, and I wonder if it's not going to sail away as we thought it would at 4 o'clock. We're now at 4.30, so we were hoping to catch the ship leaving. Um, why is there no sound? <laughs> yeah, there's no sound on this. <laughs> it's not like there's a giant microphone uh, for the bot. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I'm just reading the chat here. That's in this um, for the webcam. Why is there no sound? Uh, were you on the horizon in 2018? Yes, I think that was when I definitely was on there. Yeah, that's probably 100% when I was on board. Um, i tell you how you can see where you were in 2018. Can you see Google Maps here? Well, let's see how slow this is, but let's go to this. And you can see where you were. <laughs> When in 2018 are you asking June? Where was I in June? And it was obviously in port only on certain days. Oh, Bermuda. There you go. I was in Bermuda. Oh, that's oh, Puerto Rico. Yeah, because the ship would have been at sea. So there was a day there that I was in New York. And it tracked me. Wow, it shows me where I even walked in New York that day. That was June 25. I went to Target. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I went on the tour of Madison Square Garden as well on June 25. That's where I really went. I did the tour of the Madison Square Garden. Check that out. Is 
maintain all the photos, so there's a few there. Yeah, they were like preparing for some kind of show. I remember they had the they had nothing going on and I did the tour of Madison Square Garden that day. Yeah, so my sh my phone doesn't pick me up on a lot of the days when we're not in home ports. That there was in where was that one in oops. Where is June gone? Ninth of June, I was in Puerto Rico. I got off and went to Starbucks. <laughs> wow, I had big days. <laughs> so you can go back and find out where where, where you were in June of that year. Um, you can see here the uh, MSC ship has its um, refueling barge still alongside. They're definitely not sailing off in a hurry. And that's the, the police escort boat right there. So they're kind of on standby. But the ship hasn't moved anywhere. So, so Daryl, I was definitely on the horizon in June in 2018. So for sure, probably... I guess it was my New York cruises. Um, oh, you're heading off? No worries. Maybe I'll head off as well. Down now, we're down to a few people on the live video. Thanks everybody for watching. I like cruise ships, the YouTube channel. Thanks to Daryl for the super stickers. Was it called super chat? Super stickers. Um, really massive thank you. It's my microphone fund. Russell's microphone fund. Um, I do appreciate hugely because that'll actually go into this little kitty um, so I know that that's what I've spent it on uh, if you want to check out some of the videos on the channel if you are watching right to the end here maybe you're watching a replay um, yeah that's when you definitely met me yeah 100% yeah maybe on the ship or in the port or in the liquor store Maybe you came and looked at the cognacs or the rums or things like that, I wonder. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that, isn't it? On the maps, you can actually pull up where you were, how many years ago, and know where you were that day of the week. Um, and you can mention even, it, with the ship being at sea for those days, it doesn't have any GPS. So it doesn't pick up where you are on those days. Now with the Apple Air tags and things like that, you can track it a little bit more than what you are doing so um, yeah four that's still the right time or am I confused yeah 432 in Miami now and we haven't seen the ship pull away yet so it's either running late or it's not ready yet there's a whole lot of factors into what time that ship, ship pulls out. Obviously, each of the ships will have a, a time scheduled. <laughs> yeah, so where somebody put, why is there no sound? Uh, this camera is 59 stories up. Uh, all you would hear is wind. Football almost on uh, BBL to see seashore sail. I'm not sure what that means. Somebody just posted in that comment there. Um, oh, June 5, you're in New York. Yes, yeah, so I think that was exactly where we were. Were we that day? Let's go to your timeline again. Um, 2018. June 5, you said? It has me right there in June 5th, Hell's Kitchen, New York. Oh, there we go. I, I went to, look where I went. You can see where I walked off the ship and I went to, um, to what well, that supermarket, Whole Foods at Columbus Circle. And I took photos of the steaks, the New York Strip. That's what I took photos of when I was there because I was just 
You know how famously you know about the New York Stakes, right? I just thought it was uh, cool to take photos of the uh, food there because Whole Foods is amazing. Look at those cakes. Cookies by the pound. New York cheesecake as well. I forget, right? And that's my day there in New York. I think I took a photo as I walked past one statue. <laughs> Russell Otway walking. <laughs> there you go. That was my day before we sailed off. I went to... How cool is that? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bear Bull said she's out of here. I think we're down to one more person. Thanks. Take care. Have a good evening and a good Sunday. It's lunchtime on the West Coast. I'm out. All right. I'm probably going to be out as well. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Daryl, for the super stickers. We were hoping to catch the ship sail away, but it's not happening. We were hoping. Can we go back to that other camera? If it happens live, we'll stay here. <laughs> Let's go to this one. And Russian ads coming on. Spoiling our video. Another Russian ad. Oh, what's going on? Is one camera delayed from the other one? Surely not. Come on. Well, if we've missed it because it's not live on the other channel, that is crazy. How do they have it live? And these guys don't. And there's 400 people watching that camera and it's not pulled away. Oh, it's just pulled away now. Well, that's weird, isn't it? Let me just say. That's the aft view right there. How's that? How has that camera not been live for that length of time? These are the Deck 2 um, Family Harbour Suites here at the back of the Horizon, if you are watching. Have we missed that? That is just insane. Has the camera been offline that whole time? Is that what's happened? Yeah, there. Look at that. We can watch it going out this way just a little bit. Shall we? There we go. Looks very sleek now with the, uh, the way it looks here. Wow, that's crazy that that camera wasn't online and then when we switched cameras it was there. Yeah, that's disappointing a little bit. Wow, that's big escort here. Let's have a look at that. You can see the, the um, police boats <laughs> check the train coming in at the same time with the containers on. So we are seeing live uh, the port of Miami and the ship pulling away live right now out of Miami. It's got the two boat escort right here. Check this out. Right there. Let's 
So let's just take that away so we can get that better view. Let's just have a look at this one for a second because we can see that they, they've got cameras in two different places in Miami and we can see it from two different angles. That's the best quality we're going to get. Yeah. And safely say all 2,000 people are up on deck for the sail away. So we're going to be pretty happy to pull away now. There she goes. Anybody who's watching live still with me? We're here in, well, I'm not in Miami, but the ship is. This is Carnival Horizon sailing off for its first time after leaving, uh, well, after pausing operations for a, I guess, a technical stop. The ship sailed over to Italy and came back again. It's just now going past the MSC ship. Um, you can see Dr. Zeus's water slide right on top just there. Yeah, these two different live cameras have different angles that you can watch these from. So, let's go put play basketball up on deck. <laughs> Is anybody going to go around on the, have they got it open, the sky ride? I don't think so, looking at it. zoom back this is the there's two different live cameras here so this camera probably won't catch it now unless it zooms back a long way I'll actually move that camera over so we can't see it now. Now let's get that pool view as the ship leaves. <laughs> These are all the Havana cabins at the back of the ship here. So that's the Havana Havana cabanas on that starboard side and then port side. So these are basically the open decks here. There's a, quite a lot of these. If you are watching right at the end here, you can look at a lot of these in the channel itself. Um, See the pool area there. There's a few people just got out the jacuzzi to watch the sail out, and that's the aft dining room there. So deck uh, three and four of the back dining room, at the back of the ship, obviously. And not too many people on the Havana area. Obviously, everyone's on their balconies. This is deck two. These are the family harbor aft cabins. Which is a very neat view from here. How low you are to the water. So, all right, I'm going to close off from here, everybody. I'm going to thank everybody for watching this live stream.
And I hope you've enjoyed this uh, extended version of I Like Cruise Ships live uh, chat. We talked a lot about ships and so forth, particularly earlier on in the uh, live stream. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you in another video. Bye for now. Bye.